to my new apartment here. It's semi-finished. So there's really like nothing around me right now, except for the couch I'm on and this, this little table. But it's uh, nice to be dialing in with all of you guys. Oh, we've hit a thousand people here right now. And for those of you who are joining, I'd love for you to just drop in the chat. Let us know where in the world you are. So just 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 an interesting thing that uh, you know me and Eric were talking about um, weight loss, the importance of weight loss, and w one of the things we 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 just found out is that a lot of you um, from our email list really resonated with the email we sent out on Ozempic versus WildFit, and why natural ways of losing weight are so important. It's so important to reassert these natural ways of losing weight right now and not assume that a drug or or, or an injection from Big Pharma is necessarily the answer. Uh, but if we have some time, we'll talk about that as well later, okay? Uh, but I'm thrilled to see now close to 1,200 people have joined in. So it's good to have you guys. All of you know what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to spend about an hour today. Uh, first, uh, we're going to um, have purely educational presentation from Eric Edmeads, where he's gonna talk about the most important things you need to know about transforming your health through food. We don't speak enough about this, but food really is medicine, right? And there's a lot of cutting edge research, a lot of new science that will that shatters uh, some of the myths that we've been led to believe in the 90s and, the, and even the 2010s about food. Myths such as, if you wanna lose weight, exercise, or the common fat sugar myth, but of course, there's more. And Eric is going to be taking you on a beautiful journey of some of the most important things you need to know. In the last 20 minutes of this presentation, we'll talk about WildFit. we we'll let you know uh, how the WildFit program works, um, uh, what you need to know about it. We're also going to give you a discount if you choose to enroll in WildFit. And um, we've had tens of thousands of people in WildFit. I've done WildFit. It has utterly transformed my life. And I wanted to just share some of my experiences as well. Uh, but first... On to you, Eric. Well, Vishen, thank you very much, as always, for for having me and 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 really for taking up this mission. Uh, I remember when uh, when uh, you know when you first did WildFit and it impacted you so much. Your your immediate response was, "I need to take this to my staff now. I need to take it out to the world." And so, you know, I, I'm just I'm honored to be here and, and excited. Uh, right. Hey, Eric, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, uh, Eric, while, since you mentioned that, is it okay if I, if I just share, uh, I wanted to openly just share my before, uh, after transformation, because I think one yeah. of the beautiful things about WildFit is, you know, with, with any, every other personal growth program, you talk about, oh, I'm feeling more confident. Oh, my self-esteem is no longer like in patches. Um, and that's mental, right? You got to trust what the person is saying. But with WildFit, it's an actual physical transformation. So uh, Eric, just confirming you can see my screen. Yep. Yep. Got it. Okay. So this is my body in WildFit, uh, March to June. So like I said, it's a 90-day program. So I did uh, I did WildFit. I started WildFit March 2016. So March, April, May, June. The difference in these two photos is about nine weeks. And um, my body fat. So the important thing over here is, you know, some people may say that could be lighting or whatever, but you can look at the amount of fat I lost around my belly. Uh, the difference in body fat percentage, I went from 22% body fat to 14% body fat. And then after that, uh, uh, using Mind Valley's 10X, I put on some muscle. So there you can see over time, I my my body, I was able to, to, to add on more muscle. I gained weight, uh, but my waist stayed the same. Interestingly enough, my waist is still the same as 2016. So it's now been eight years since I did Wild Fit. I just turned 48 this week, so I'm pushing 50. And my waist is still the same as eight years ago when I did WildFit at the age of 40. One of the most interesting things about WildFit uh, is this, right? I remember, Eric, when I did WildFit, I was skeptical because um, in the past, I would put, push myself through some hardcore difficult diets. I would lose weight. Then, boom, I would put it back on. And you told me something really interesting. You said WildFit is designed to train your body to burn fat and not just rely on sugar. So even if you put on a little bit of weight after WildFit, like say after Christmas season, if you sim you can easily reactivate the fat burning and go back to your regular waist. So I want to share with you guys an experiment I did. So um, my waist is, um, there is a, there's an ideal waist measurement for men. It's, it's, a, it's a measurement called the Adonis um, measurement. And it's basically your waist 
ideally should be six and a half times your, your wrist, right? So for me, that adds up to around 75 centimeters because I'm not a big size person, 75 centimeters. So um, after Christmas, my waist went up to 80 centimeters and I wanted to see how fast could I drop five centimeters off my waist. It took me two weeks. And all I had to do was in two weeks, just avoid bread and alcohol. And instantly my body, as you said, Eric, my body was able to tap into fat reserves, just go through, just burn through fat and boom. And in those two weeks, I did zero exercise, just a little bit of walking because I wanted to really isolate the variable as just being food. So I was really surprised at, at what happened. Um, so we'll talk about the benefits of WildFit later. Uh, but now, Eric, back to you. Okay, excellent. Um, so so let's, uh, I just, I, I want to say this. Um, I want to know in the chat, for those of you, I think because this has largely been this webinar is, is really about the the secrets for unlocking weight weight release. How do you how do you sort of quote right size your body if you want to release a little weight? So I'm curious, what have you guys tried in the past? Tell me in the chat what type of things have you tried in the past, and 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 then I want to I want to sort of ask an interesting question, and that is how many of you have kind of given up? Like you're even surprised that you're on this webinar, you know? Like you you've tried a bunch of different diets. And you've said, that's it. I'm never going on another diet again. And here you are, you find yourself on a webinar and there's a little party going, why bother? Is anybody in that? Yeah. Okay. Wow. You guys are given up, embarrassed. I tried them all. I can't even keep up with the comments from you guys. So here's what I want you to know. Um, right now, I'm going to share with you a really, really powerful secret that's in plain sight that will unlock all of your understanding about why weight is gained and then why it's lost and what you can do about it. And it's 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 absolutely true and it's very, very effective. We've had tens of thousands of people in over a hundred countries go through this process, but I'm gonna give you one of the key principles right now so that you really understand it and you can put it into practical use. Um, before I do that though, there's a very important message that I have for you because here, here's, here's part of the trap that I think some of you might be in. I'm not gonna ask you to say this one out loud because well, frankly, it would be, uh, you know, sort of a circular logic, but I know that many people feel some shame about say being a little overweight. I know that a lot of people feel that way. And, and then I know that a lot of people feel like they failed. As a matter of fact, this one I will ask you, how many of you people feel like you failed a diet? You failed it. How many people feel like you just failed it? You signed up for it, you did it, you were gonna do it, and then you failed. You're a horrible failure, you failed. Okay, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wow, a lot of you feel that way. Wow, I'm really sorry. Wow. Okay, okay, I'm seeing the notes. Let me, let me, uh, I really want you to hear me and I have two very important messages for you. And by the end of this webinar, you're gonna know they're true and you're gonna be ready to, to handle it. The first message is that you have never failed a diet. The diet has failed you every single time. Yeah, sure, you feel like your willpower gave out or what have you and you failed the diet. No, you have never failed the diet. The diet has failed you. That's the way that works. And, and for those of you who have felt a bit of shame about failing your diets or you felt like you've given up or a bit shame of, of you know, being a little overweight or a lot overweight, whatever the case might be, I, I want you to hear one more thing. And this is so very, very important. It is not your fault. I know that, that, that the media... And the people around you and 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 the world, it, it's basically it's basically conspired to make you feel that it's your fault. If you just ate a little less and and you went on a diet or you did a little exercise, you wouldn't be in that situation. You can hear people thinking those thoughts sometimes if you're carrying a little extra weight. But what I want you to know is that it is not your fault. As a matter of fact, let's think about this. Um, have you ever seen an animal in nature that's overweight? Ever? Have you ever? No, you've never, ever seen that. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen. It, you don't see that. But wait a minute now. What animals have you seen that are overweight? I can tell you the ones you've seen. You've seen livestock that's overweight, probably. You've definitely seen pets that are overweight. And you've seen people that are overweight. And you know what those three things have in common? They're fed by human capitalistic food manufacturing installations. That's it. That's the deal. If they're in nature, they don't get like that. 
The minute their food control, their, their food supply is taken over by profit-seeking corporations, then those profit-seeking corporations are going to do everything they can to trick you into eating more of the wrong things. And guess what? How many of you have found that once you've kind of given up, it gives you permission to eat a little more of the stuff you wish you wouldn't really eat and the cycle repeats? Anybody recognize that pattern? So I really want you to hear me. It is not your fault. It is absolutely not your fault. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put this in another way for you. And that is that not only is it not your fault, but the very secret and plain sight that I'm about to show you is being used against you by the food industry. So I'm going to show you one of the most powerful things about the human body. And then I'm going to show you that the food industry is using this very tool against you. So you not knowing about it definitely means that this is not your fault. And so here's where we're going to go. What I want to tell you is a, a really fascinating story about three years ago, maybe a little bit more, I got a phone call. I got a phone call from a doctor and he, he was a medical doctor who was also an, an assistant professor of, of, of medicine at UCLA. And he had been 40 pounds overweight and hypertensive, hypertensive and uh, type 2 diabetic and, 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 and generally tired and sick all the time. Two days in a row, he stopped off at Starbucks to pick himself up a coffee to keep himself awake. And, you know, both days after buying the Starbucks, he fell asleep behind the wheel and got into car accidents. This is like this happened twice in one week. It was like and it made him wonder. It made him wonder what right he had to be a doctor. His name is Dr. Ruben Ruiz. And that night after his second accident, he started asking himself, what the hell? Like, I, how can I be a doctor? I'm overweight. I'm, I'm on 10 prescription medications. This is insane. And, and then he went on, he went on the internet, like many of you have done. And, 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 and then he found a master class, much like the one that you are at right now. And he did that master class. And then 90 days later, he had lost 40 pounds. He was no longer hypertensive. He was no longer diabetic, no longer type two diabetic. And he was off nine of his 10 prescription medications. It took him another few months to get off the 10th. Then he contacted me immediately and he said, you need to get this out into the medical space because we doctors don't know this stuff. We weren't taught this. We don't study food. And he then asked me if I would co-write a book with him. So what I want you to know is that in the exploration of his experience and in the research that went into preparing that book and getting our, our message out into the world, we discovered this thing that you need to understand. And that is humans, humans evolved something that we call metabolic modes. You have a different metabolic mode depending on what's going on in your life. And if you don't rotate through those metabolic modes on a reasonable basis, if you get stuck in one metabolic mode, then you will create imbalance. And that imbalance could result in a number of things, but particularly and most commonly, things like lifestyle diseases, being overweight or inflammation, thyroid dysfunction, uh, and of course, diabetes and these types of things. So... Where these metabolic modes come from, this is this is so like so fascinating. It's very easy for us right now to forget how how hard life was 200 years ago. I mean, most of us couldn't handle it. Life 200 years ago, too hard. We have hot and cold running water. Hell, we have toilet paper. Life 200 years ago, much more difficult. But I want you to think even more about life, say, 20,000 years ago and 90% and, and of, of the human journey on this planet. We didn't have food delivery. We didn't have refrigerators. We didn't have, uh, you know, we didn't have food. We, we had to wake up every morning and go and get the food. And worse than that, over the course of the year, the, the available food would change because the seasons would change. One minute you can go get the food from that bush and now you can't. And then the next minute you can get the food from there and then you could go hunting over there, but it would constantly change with the seasons. And one of the seasons in particular was very dangerous to our ancestors. Can anybody guess? There was one season that was very tough on our ancestors. It led to widespread starvation. It, it was very difficult, particularly on children. It made life unbearably difficult. You guys got it. Winter, winter, you, this, this, that's it right there. Winter. And by the way, the winter we're talking about is not, you know, Northern Canada winter. We're not talking Northern Europe winter. We're talking Sub-Saharan African winter, which is drought which means there's not much, there's not many, there's not many plants growing. The hunting is bad. There's no food around. And, and so starvation. And it was a very present reality. 
And so our species had to evolve. It had to adapt. You know, sir, sir, adaptation is about is about responding to the environment and then accepting certain mutations, genetic mutations that allow us to, to survive and maybe even thrive in a given environment. And winter, winter was killing, winter was killing a very high percentage of people, but some people got a small genetic modification. And what it did was it prepared them for that winter. It put them into a metabolic mode that allowed them to prepare, prepare for the winter. But the question is, how did they know to trigger that mode? Did they have an app? Oh, look, oh, oh, my app tells me winters. No, they didn't have that. What they had was environmental triggers. And the environmental triggers for, meta for, for winter were all the foods that were available in the autumn season. The foods that were available in the autumn season indicated to them that winter was coming, indica indicated to their body that winter was coming. And so, so all of a sudden, as they're eating all these autumn foods, their body goes, oh, autumn foods, winter must be coming. So the autumn foods would trigger the body to start processing sugar in a different way. And you know, it would start processing food in a different way. So then what would happen is, is that your body would go, okay, I'm eating all these autumn foods. What I need to do is, well, what do I need to store? What do I need to save up to survive winter? What do I need to store? And bear in mind, I don't have a fridge. I don't have a pantry, so I'm gonna have to store it on my body. What do I need to store? Well, some of you've got it, I need to store fat, but the truth is what I really need to store is energy, nutrients, and water. I need to store those things to prepare for this seasonally imposed fast, right? I'm about to go on this, this involuntary fast and I gotta store some stuff. And of course, fat is the best way to store that. So during that whole period of time, you're eating those autumn foods and you are, you are activating a, a metabolic mode. And what's amazing about this is your pancreas, your pancreas has two different um, uh, hormones that it produces. One is called glucagon and the other one is called insulin. And it doesn't produce them at the same time. You have the, it, it, it has two very distinct jobs. When you are in the fall and you're eating a lot of fall foods, then what happens is, is that your pancreas is producing tons and tons of insulin and you're getting you're getting a low grade level of insulin insensitivity. So what's happening is, is that you're, you're, you're beginning to store a lot of the sugar. And so then you, you put on some fat. This is normal. You're supposed to put on five or 10 pounds as you're heading into the winter. Then, then you would pass into winter. And as you pass into winter, you would enter, well, imposed calorie restriction, right? Like you would be going on effectively a fast, not your choice, mother nature was doing it, but, but your body was ready for it because you'd stored extra energy. And so you were ready for it. And by the way, think about this. You didn't run out of energy when you ran out of food. You actually sometimes even got more because you were gonna need more energy because you're gonna have to walk further and, and you're gonna have to work harder to get your food. And so, so because you stored that fat, you're gonna make it through the winter. The problem is that as we are living today, the food industry has figured out these metabolic modes. So for example, one of the things that's very available in the fall is fruit, uh, also root vegetables, also honey, very available in the fall. These things are not bad. They're not bad things. But when you eat them in the fall, it triggers for your body to say, all right, I have to prepare for the winter. I have to prepare for the winter. And, 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 and not only does it trigger you to store some fat, but those foods also make you hungry. Right, sugar makes you hungry, and by the you know all of those foods have some sugar in them. Sugar makes you hungry. Why? Well, because if if you didn't eat enough during the fall, you didn't make it through the winter. So as you started eating the fall foods, your body's like, I'm hungry. I need to eat more. You know what's really cool about this? Here's another example. If you hold your fist up and you look at it, that's about the size of your stomach normally. That's your normal size of stomach. But in the fall. What's happening is it's very important for you to load up. It's very, very important for you to load up. And so your stomach can expand. So as you're eating these berries and those root vegetables and you're getting all this insulin production, you become hungry, hungrier, and then you eat more and then your belly stretches. Does anybody recognize this pattern? Has anybody noticed this, that if you're eating something that's maybe more carbohydrate rich or certainly more sugary, that it can make you feel hungry. It can cause you to feel even more hungry. And then half an hour later, you can feel a huge energy drop and then you need more food, right? You need more food. 
This is not a broken system. It's a perfect system in the right environment, but it's a broken system when the food industry figured it out. Because once the food industry figured out these metabolic modes, they started using, they started using your metabolism against you. Now, this is only one of the various mechanisms, but they started using your metabolism against you. And this is why today, if you pick up the labels and you look at any given food, sugar is in just about anything. And there's over 60 names for sugar now. You know, there's one breakfast cereal, I can't think of the brand, but sugar is not the number one ingredient. It's the number two and the number three ingredient because it's different kinds of sugar. If they only used one kind of sugar, it would have to be the number one ingredient. But by splitting it into multiple names, they can push it down the list. They put it in there because they know that it triggers additional cravings and that it slows your metabolism, right? And you start, you start to put on weight. So when we understand this, now, now what happens is, is that we begin to, uh, you know, we begin to be able to develop defenses against it, begin to understand it. But the challenge is, is that the food industry is like completely focused on profitability. You have a food industry that's completely focused on selling you as much food as they can, right? Not necessarily the most nutritious because if the food was highly nutritious, you wouldn't eat so much of it. So it's really, because you'd be full, you'd, your body would go, well, I've got enough. Instead, they want to get you to eat a lot more food that's not ideal for you. And that's going to trigger your hunger. And then for many of you, that's going to cause various types of metabolic dysfunction, which might result in weight gain. It might result in, in prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. It might result, result in emotional fluctuations, like huge ups and downs emotionally. If you know anybody who gets hungry or, 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 or hangry, I should say, or, or fungry, then you'll know what I'm talking about, that their emotions are being affected by all of this. Now, what we want to do to fix this is, first of all, to understand it to understand that, that the, the, the food industry and now the diet industry, which has been heavily affected by the food industry, is propagating myths that absolutely don't work. So as Vishen mentioned earlier, one of those myths is, hey, you know what? You should just go exercise your weight away. Boris Johnson, prime minister of the United Kingdom at the time, realizes after the COVID pandemic that obesity was a big problem. And he goes, we're going to launch a war on, di on, on, on diabetes and obesity. We're going to solve this problem. And the next day he announces that he's going to do it with his bicycle his bicycle by the way he hasn't solved the problem for him or his country and he's and i don't even know if he's using his bicycle but what i do know is that the myth that you could run or or, or swim or bicycle your calories away your fat away that myth was created by guess who the soft drink industry the soft drink industry created that because they saw people becoming sensitive about calories so they started producing this idea of well if you're worried about calories all you have to do is burn more but it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all because it fails to understand this trigger that I'm talking to you about, these metabolic modes. Your body has a mode during which it wants to store fat. It has a mode during which it wants to burn and release that fat. It has another mode in which it wants to burn protein. And a lot of people are like, oh, you don't want to burn your protein. Yes, you do. You do because guess what? When your body burns protein, like, you know, if you're on a fast or, or calorie restriction, your body is so super smart. Again, remember metabolic modes, your body uses that fasting period or that, that, that winter period to burn old, sick and diseased proteins first. It's so smart. It's like if you and I are in a cabin in the woods and we've run out of firewood and we're like freezing, we're going to start burning the furniture, right? Only we're going to burn the old broken furniture first. <laughs> we're not going to burn the beautiful piano. We're going to, we're going to burn the, the broken picnic table. Well, your body does exactly the same thing too. So I want to show you the four metabolic modes and kind of tell you how you can trigger them. The first metabolic mode to understand is, is the metabolic mode of preparing for winter. It's called fall or autumn. And when you're in fall or autumn, you are telling your body, winter's coming. I need to store some fat. I need to put some fat on. So if you're preparing for an endurance race, you want to go climb Kilimanjaro, you're going you're gonna to do something like that. It's important to know that that season might be very good in helping you to prepare. Then, then you go into winter. And during winter, because there's heavy calorie restriction, what happens is your body stops wanting to burn fat. And, and by the way, there's a clue here. Did you hear what I just said? You go into calorie restriction and your body stops wanting to burn fat. Wait a second, how many of you have been on diets where they told you to restrict your calories to release weight, 
right? Well, the calories in, calories out myth is, is a myth. It's completely wrong. Here's the deal is that when you go on calorie restriction, your body goes, oh, I should switch over to burning protein. And if you stay there too long, you'll even burn the bad protein. So you want to use that metabolic mode as a cleansing function every now and again, rarely. Burn out the old sick proteins and move on. Here's an interesting question. You guys tell me. When you consider what broken proteins are, you know, old broken antibodies and, and unused insulin and a variety of different proteins that your body makes and they get broken and then they're cluttering up your system. What do you think might happen if you never cleanse them? If you never get rid of these old broken proteins, these old, uh, uh, you know, diseased or broken proteins, if you never get rid of them, how might that manifest in your body? What could that cause, do you imagine? You got it. You, you got it right there. You got it. All of those things are, are going to be, uh, you're going to increase the risk factor for all of those things by not going through that metabolic mode. So we've talked about the metabolic mode of preparing for winter. Then we've talked about the importance of winter. Now, imagine what winter was like. You're star you're, you feel like you're starving. There's not a lot of food around. And then suddenly the skies go dark. The clouds roll in. The, the thunder roars across the sky and the lightning starts cracking the skyline and the rain comes thundering down and the plants start growing. And for, for the non-vegetarian vegans, the hunting starts becoming amazing. And suddenly there's a tremendous amount of food abundance, food abundance, but it's spring food abundance. And during that food abundance, your body goes, oh, we made it through the winter and we no longer need to carry this extra emergency fat anymore. Do you understand? You, you go into this new metabolic mode, your body relaxes. It says, oh, thank God, I don't need to carry this extra weight anymore. And during that season, your muscles start to build, your bone density improves, all the malnutrition that may have happened over that winter season is replaced and you are lifting your full nutrition. You've got great blood sugar. This is the ultimate healing mode. This is the season of recovering from an injury. It's the, it's the season of recovering from disease. It is the rebuilding, rejuvenation season. And, and if you do it really well, it produces extra you know, uh, stem cell production, more human growth hormone when you're sleeping at night. It's an unbelievable season. This is why we have a prolific health problem in, 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 in the world now. Because the food industry has not only allowed us to not live with these seasons, and you need these seasons. You need all four of them. If you do not live all four of these seasons, you're going to have consequences. And some of the consequences are frankly severe. But so they've eliminated the seasons by making whatever food you want available all the time. But then on top of that, they've developed the most disastrous foods that are designed specifically to trigger the one metabolic mode that makes you hungry, that slows your metabolism, that puts you back into the pleasure trap of food. And so summer, as we roll out of winter, summer is really just a way of gently preparing you to move into the fall season. Because in summer, you start seeing some summer berries, high antioxidant, great for cleansing, all, all that stuff's good. You start to see some, and you start to produce a little bit more insulin. You, 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 uh, you, you, you find some honey, you start to produce a little bit more insulin, and that moves you back into the fall season to, to prepare you for the next winter. Now, I know some of you are asking some questions about what about the seasons where I live? We're not talking about that. We're talking about the seasons that humans evolved to survive and to utilize. And those are the seasons of Sub-Saharan Africa. And, and when you really understand these seasons, it becomes incredible because let's say, as I mentioned earlier, you're preparing to climb Kilimanjaro. I've climbed it seven times and, and, and I'm climbing Kilimanjaro. So what do I do? Can anybody tell me what season do I want to go into to prepare for Kilimanjaro? What season would be good? I want lots of energy on my body. I, I want I, I want to be in, I want to have lots of energy. You guys who said fall, you've got it. You know, fall, summer and fall are a great season for preparing, for preparing. But hold on a minute now. Do I want to be in fall season when I actually climb the mountain? Like, do I want to be slow and sluggish from the sugar when I'm climbing the mountain? So what season might be better for me to climb the mountain? So you got the season that's going to help me prepare for the climb. And now what season's going to help me climb it? There are two, two of them. And you guys got it. Spring and winter. They're great seasons. I've climbed in both. 
And I can tell you that winter, which is to say I went on a fast and climbed Kilimanjaro on a fast, it was the easiest summit I ever had of Kilimanjaro. It was unbelievable. My guides, they thought I was crazy. If they didn't know me so well from all the climbs I'd done, they told me they would never have let me climb. If they see somebody stop eating, they send them down the mountain because they knew me very well. They trusted me. And then they watched me basically jog up the mountain in the best shape I'd ever been in because I understood my metabolic mode. So let's see if you guys are getting this now. Um, Christmas is coming and you want to enjoy some fun stuff over Christmas. And you know, your grandmother's going to make some or other food that you may or may not want to eat and, and and you're heading into 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 that season what what season might you find yourself in going into the christmas season with lots of yummy foods around what season might that be for you you got it it's it could be summer or fall depending on how many carbs you're having but then january rolls around and the diet season begins and what the diet season does it tells everybody to go straight to winter yeah, you got to start starving yourself. And by the way, run and go to the gym at the same time, stress your system out, raise your cortisol. And then you wonder why it is that the average person has given up on their New Year's resolutions in the first week of January and given up on their diet by the by the 10th of January. Can anybody relate to that story? Has anybody, I mean, you probably haven't done that yourself, but you've you've seen it happen, right? You've seen it, maybe you've seen it up close, right? By the way, do you want to know why Mind Valley and I partnered to do this late in January like we do? We do it right here, right now to pick up all the people that have been failed by the diet industry. We do it right here, right now. We've done it this way for years. We've helped thousands of people finally solve this mystery. And we do it right here, right now, because right here, right now is the very best time to do it. Because most people set resolutions, they jumped on a diet and it failed them again. And they, and then they feel like they failed and they didn't. But you know why they have to make you feel like you failed? So they can get you to the next one. And then they can sell you some more of their special weird food and all that kind of stuff. Now, now, instead of moving into some artificial, gross, long-term, painful winter like the diet industry wants you to do, what do you think the right season for January would be? After you've had a bit of a fall season, you've had a bit of a fall season, you've had lots of fun with your fall season, maybe you put on a few holiday pounds. I did, right? Then what, what season do you want? There you go, guys, spring. You want to move into spring. You want to start eating an abundance of the right spring foods. And as you do that, what will happen is your metabolism will speed up. You'll start building muscle mass. If you're doing some exercise, you'll, you'll, you'll change everything. Your moods will stabilize. You will become a better human being. I'm telling you, like if you are the kind of person or if you know somebody who has these big emotional ups and downs, they're kind of manic, like one minute they're, they're great and the next minute they're down in the dumps and it's, it's often related to blood sugar. Spring comes along. Everybody's happier. Everybody's healthier. Now, I want to ask you um, another example. I want you to imagine that you're studying for an exam or a major professional uh, um, performance that you have to do that really is going to require your cognition. You're going to need to think fast. You want your memory to work. What season do you think you should be in for that? What do you think? What season? You guys are sharp. You're really sharp. You, most of you are 100% on board. Winter and spring, both great seasons for that. Why? Because in the fall season, when we're eating lots of carbohydrates, we actually slow our cognition and we slow it so much that if you get stuck in fall, well, I'm going to share with you an unpleasant truth. Today in America, if you make it to 75 years old, you have a 50% chance of developing dementia. And I'm going to tell you that that is largely due to being stuck in the fall season for most of your life. It's eating carbohydrates too often and too regularly. Hey, look, I'm not against it. I'm not the one here telling you sugar's bad, sugar's bad. You have to give up all these foods. No, you just need to understand the role of the food and eat it in the right timing. And, and, and so what I'm saying to you is that if you want a healthy brain, who anybody interested in healthy brain? Anybody here want a healthy brain? Here's the deal. I want you to all go and study from Jim Crick on how to use your brain. And we got to make sure the brain is healthy so that we can really truly make it work. You want a healthy brain? Well, here's the deal. You need to go into metabolic mode called winter and spring every now and again to really make sure your brain is operating. And if you want your brain to be operating in your advanced years, because because you can take this as good or bad news. The life expectancy of most people on earth is growing all the time. Meanwhile, the prevalence of dementia is growing all the time, which means, yeah, sure, we get to live longer, but we don't even know, we, 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 you know, our, our brain isn't working. No. If we visit the metabolic season of winter and spring on, on some kind of a regular cycle, you will have significantly better brain health. You'll have significantly better immunity 
and you'll have significantly better emotional health in every possible way. This is this is the key right here. And when I call it the secret that's in plain sight, it's not a secret. We, we've already seen it. Okay, guys, uh, tell me, what happens to chipmunks and bears in the fall autumn season? What happens to them? What, what happens to their bodies during that season? Oh, look, they get sleepy, tired, and fatten up. Did anybody notice sleepy, tired, and fatten up? as people are eating lots of Christmas foods? Did anybody notice that? Did anybody see sleepy, tired, and fattening up? Did anybody experience some of that personally? Like, like no. guys, it's, it's not a secret. It's right there built into the metabolism. It's advertised to the world that there are metabolic modes and each of the modes serves a function. And if you get stuck in one mode, there's gonna be consequences. And by the way, the mode that most people in, in let's call the developed world at the moment, and the, 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 the mode that most people are stuck in is what we might call like junk fall. <laughs> like, like not only are they stuck in the fall season, but the stuff they're eating in the fall season is absolutely atrocious, right? Like it's, it's, it's not only that it's the wrong triggering food, but it's also highly toxic. You know, guys, it's so easy on any given day for your emotions to get involved in this whole thing. And, and so I want to leave you with this about emotions. I want to, I want to share this with you about emotions. You evolved emotions that were going to help you to survive. That's what they're for. Your emotions are designed. So if you experience some shame, it's because you probably did something. I'm not talking about shame that the diet industry put on you. I'm talking about the shame that you feel because you said the wrong thing. Has anybody here ever said the wrong thing and felt a little shame? right? Like that's natural. It's healthy shame. It's not a bad thing. And then, and then what it, that shame is supposed to do is to teach you, to educate you, to make you not make that same mistake again. All of our emotions are like that. The challenge is, is that our emotions evolve for life in nature. So if you're living in nature, your emotions reward you for getting up and going out, gathering food or going hunting. Your, your emotions reward you for that. Today, our emotions reward us for sitting on the couch and watching Netflix. You see the problem? And so I wanna walk you through a little example of how you wanna think about emotional eating and give you some tools to use about emotional eating. So first thing is I need to ask you, what food solves for lonely depression? You guys be the food doctor. Guys, I'm having lonely depression. What food can help me out? Please tell me, I need to know. Oh, Nora, ice cream. Yes, I think chocolate, junk food, cookies, cookies. Oh, muy bueno, uh, chocolate. Like, I mean, you guys, you guys are the food doctor. Only you've been educated by the food industry. So your advice is a little, it's a little off. It's a little off. Because here's the thing. Can any of those foods actually solve lonely depression? Any of them? Can any of them? <laughs> <laughs> maybe for 30 seconds, <laughs> you know, maybe for 30 seconds, but it doesn't cure it. It distracts you from the problem, right? It distracts you from the problem. It doesn't cure it. Oh, and by the way, 30 minutes after you ate your sugar bomb of emotional delight, do you feel the same as you did before, better than you did before, or even worse than you did before? Anybody tried this experiment? Which is it? The same as you did before, sad and lonely, or, or better or worse, right? You feel even worse because You've messed with your metabolism and you've caused this huge sugar rush and the huge insulin rush. And now you're on this mood roller coaster and they want you to be that way because you deserve a break today, right? They want you to feel that way because they're going to hit you with their advertising slogans and emotional triggers and then they're going to sell you something. So I'm going to share with you a black belt skill. Who would like a black belt food psychology skill? Anybody want one? This is a, this is black belt. If you apply this one thing, it can change your entire life. All right. This is going to be a bit of a mic drop moment for some of you, and I want you to hear it. I told you before, your emotions are designed, your emotions are designed to help you to survive. And so if you do good things, your body makes you feel good. Unfortunately, in our society today, our emotions are being manipulated against us. And so now we can go eat a Cinnabon and feel good, but do bad things to our body, right? Now, Here's the problem though, is that your body doesn't even know what a Cinnabon is. It just knows that it's huge calories and it must be good because in nature, there was nothing bad like that. There was nothing bad. If you stumbled upon a beehive, you ate all the honey. There was nothing bad about that. It was good. So your body sees all these calories and goes, good, 
good calories. And it starts giving you serotonin and dopamine and it locks in the memory and says, this, this is good. How did we create this? And then it looks back and it goes, oh, we created sadness first, then a little depression, and then we gave in to the cinnamon and that's how we got it. So from now onwards, if we want a big calorie boost, all we have to do is create depression. Or if you ch give your children cookies when they trip and fall, they learn very quickly. All I have to do is trip and fall and skin my knee and I might get a cookie. And you wonder why you become unconsciously clumsy. If that's not a mic drop observation for you, I don't, I don't know what is. What I'm saying to you is that if you just had a terrible day at work, then what's going to happen is your body's going to look back at your memory and it's going to remember that time that your team lost the game and everybody was crying and they were sad and the coach said, oh guys, you did your best. It's not whether you win or lose. It's how you played the game and you played well. Let's go get Cokes and ice cream. And then that team started learning that the way to get Cokes and ice cream was by losing and having a bad day. And then when you're 40 years old, you're, you're, you're sitting at work one day and you had a bad day. Where do you go? You go to that section of the grocery store. You go get the ice cream or the cookies or whatever it was for you. So not only are you learning to reward a bad day with a, 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 an ice cream or a beer or a cookie or whatever that is, your body is learning to, listen to me, your body is learning to create the bad day in the first place to get to the calorie reward. Because for millions of years, getting bonus calories meant you survived. It will do anything it can to do that. So I'm going to tell you how to beat this. Last Christmas, I'm home. I've got my girlfriend and her daughters and my daughter, and it's the house of oxytocin. It's the most gorgeous holiday season ever. I can't tell you. We, we just, it was, it was estrogen and oxytocin and just beautiful, beautiful. And then, and oh, and my girlfriend's sister was there with her daughter. It was just, a, it was the most, and then one by one, they all started going home and they started going home. And then, and then, and then my girlfriend had to travel. And then it was just me and my daughter, my little girl. And we were just having the best time. And then she went to go to her mom's and I was completely on my own. And I thought the day before when I was handing her over, I thought, ah, finally, it's gonna be man time around here. The girls are gone. We're gonna watch violent things on TV and we're gonna, and then, and, and then, I, and then I, I just woke up that morning and I felt really depressed. And I had this smoothie. I had the ingredients to make this smoothie in the fridge. And it's a, it's a healthy smoothie, but it's a big carb load smoothie. Don't get me wrong. We call it Grace. And, and, and I, I, I'm walking through my house and I'm feeling sad and depressed. And I suddenly think to myself, you have the ingredients to make grace. You should have one right now. And then this voice popped up. We don't use calories as a drug to not feel bad. Because if we do, we teach our body to feel bad. And I said, shut up to the voice. I don't want to hear this right now. I want my smoothie. I don't want to hear this. And my voice says, the only way you can have the smoothie is if you have a great day. We do not reward depressed states with high calories because then it trains our bodies to create depressed states. And I walked out of the kitchen annoyed. I was going to use a different word, but I'm going to stick with annoyed. And then I went outside and I sat on the beach and I started making a sandcastle. And as I started making the sandcastle, I started losing time and the tide started coming in and it was attacking my sandcastle and I had to build a wall over here. And then pretty soon I had this like massive sandcastle, big, much bigger than me, like all around, like three meters, 12 feet. And then my friends walked by and they saw the sandcastle and they asked for a tour. So I showed them the different rooms and I, I, I introduced them to Cedric, a hermit crab who had moved into one of the wings. And, and, I, and then they said, hey, do you want to go get some lunch? And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to abandon my sandcastle to the ocean. And, 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 then, and then they took me to... They took me to lunch and we laughed and we played and we had a great time. And then after it was all done and the day was done and the sun was dipping down into the ocean, I walked back into my house and my voice said, you can have grace now if you want. And here's the twist. I didn't even really want it anymore. Your emotions are everything. So I want to recap today for you. 
The secret that's hitting, hiding in plain sight is evolutionary biology. You are a homo sapien. You evolved four metabolic modes. You want to learn those metabolic modes and understand them because not only will they help you to get your metabolic health on track and help you to release weight and help you to, to, to prevent diabetes or reverse it if you're dealing with it, not only will it do all of that for you, but it will help your immune system. Guys, we all know at this point, diabetes and obesity were two of the greatest risk factors of developing a bad COVID situation, as was vitamin D deficiency. Your health was everything for your immune system. Those four metabolic modes fix the world. They're incredible. And then we talked about emotions and how we let emotions guide us and how we no longer want to reward our negative emotions with high calorie food. So put these things into practice and vision, welcome back. Thank you, Eric. So I hope you guys got a lot out of that. If you understand that paradigm, you start looking at weight loss, at healthy eating in a completely different way. Okay, now let's talk about the WowFit program and how that program works, the science behind the program, so you guys can decide if you want to enroll in WowFit. Now, keep in mind, relative to everything else out there, WowFit is very affordable, but it is 90 days. It's a 90-day commitment. But if you look at the case studies, over thousands of case studies, the amount of weight that people drop, it is astounding. I put 100 members of my team on WildFit, and I wanted to see what was the record. Can you guess what was the most amount of weight that out of 100 members of my Mind Valley team, and we have around 400 employees, but 100 did it. Can you guess? So let's, let's just use pounds as a reference, right? 91 pounds. 91 pounds was the highest. Now, that person, because uh, I, I like to be very fact-based, that person lost close to 60 pounds in the first three months, then another... Uh, 30 pounds in the subsequent three months. So he, he continued losing weight after WildFit. Number two and number three tied at 51 pounds. Either way, all of these were remarkable numbers. But one of the most common things that I hear from members of my team who 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 do this is, is how, how easy it seems after they go through it. And that is because of the behavioral change dynamics that uh, Eric takes you through, where he really retrains your your habits and your beliefs around food. Okay, so let's quickly recap the benefits. You improve your overall health. People see tendonitis disappear, their skin clears up. You amplify your energy. Energy levels go through the roof. So if you've been having energy drops throughout the day, this fixes it because energy has to do with healthy metabolism. And while it gives you that. Third, you strengthen your immunity. I, uh, I have a daughter, um, back when I did Wild Fit, my daughter was two years old and she would, come in, cuddle up with me in bed, and then bring to me all of the diseases that she got from other kids in kindergarten. I would frequently get colds and coughs. After WildFit, none of that issue. I just stopped getting sick. It's rare that I ever get sick these days. Third, you upgrade your eating habits. You start craving what's right for you. You hit your ideal weight. You regain youthfulness. Um, many people who have done WildFit say that they start looking years younger. And of course, scientifically, there are correlations with an extension in lifespan. Okay, there are many, many stories about Something me. here that your life changed by WildFit. I want to share that. this one. Eric, can you hear that? Down? Yep. Thank so this you was, so much. Now I'd like to invite- the I asked Wildfit people to who were attending a Mind Valley event where I was introducing Eric, who had done WildFit, and I invited them on stage so to share Wildfit their stories. So has transformed your life, come on stage with me. Look, look at the sheer number of people over here. Does anybody have a crazy Wildfit story of how Wildfit transformed you? Yes. I was on antidepressants for eight years. Well, no antidepressants. I stopped drinking alcohol as a result. Wow. I'm sure it's balanced. I thought I had chronic or block nose, but it was due to dairy. I got rid of toast and chips for life. Who else? You can sleep again. Amazing. Who else? I had enough energy to start my business at 48. I'm 77 and I only take one medication. 77 and only one medication. Um, I only changed my relationship with food. I, I no longer been eat, but it changed my relationship with myself and the way that I understand my own thoughts and emotions. I used to walk with Len, now I run. And by the way, was it difficult or was it easier than you expected? Everyone. Really? Every, everyone says easier than you've expected. Everyone should do this. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so there are tons of case studies out there, okay? Um, so 
if you're sick of diets and weight loss programs, this may be the most important journey you can take. And uh, Eric, tell us about the guarantee. Um, the the guarantee that we've used uh, for since the beginning is is very simply this: it works. It, it absolutely works. And if you do the program and you do a minimum level of participation in the program, and 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 you want your money back at the end, we'll simply give it back to you. It's that simple. Okay. Um, so uh, tons of case studies are available all across our website. Um, lots of before after pictures. You can see the transformations here. And there are tons and tons of I feel tons so much videos. more comfortable holding space for myself. That whole mentality shift is just really amazing when I'm able to do stuff like that. Those are some huge things. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. One of the biggest changes for me is just like my mental shift and the fact that taking better care of myself and being easier on myself at the same time was is the biggest difference to me. Doing the wild the journey. And I think since the program ended, like I've still been releasing weight, things are still going in the right direction, just looking better every day. Finishing the program after like three months committed to something and sticking to it and, and seeing results, like maybe the biggest win. My biggest thing is my husband. Oh, you changed. And also my kids, like, for example, when we went to a restaurant, and even though they were full, they just couldn't stop. And now... And, and I just want to stop there. One of the most beautiful things we hear about while fit, and you can watch this full video online, is that um, your entire family benefits from it. After I started changing my, my eating habits, my mom got on it, and um, my mom lost five kilograms, which at her age was remarkable. My father dropped so much weight. He had diff he was a, he's a man in the 70s, uh, and this changed him. He was able to walk longer distance, walk upstairs with comfort, and it was amazing how it impacted my entire family. Uh, so again, tons and tons of case studies. You can go to stories.mindvalley.com, select Wild Fit, and you'll be able to browse these case studies. But one thing you'll notice is that it's not just about weight. All of us today, because we are bombarded with messaging and, and ads on dropping weight, it's not just about weight. When you start eating well, so many other aspects of your biology change. My hair stopped graying. That was one of my the weird things I saw about Wild Fit. And so there are huge numbers of, of different benefits that people get, right? And again, it happens in 90 days. Now, when you go to the program, uh, part one is about discovering what your body needs. And uh, you can browse all of this on the website, so we won't spend too much time on it. Part two is allowing your natural human diet to take over. Part three is releasing weight rapidly and keeping it off. And right, what, one thing that I'm really excited about WildFit and why as the publisher for Eric's program, we're thrilled to work with Eric, is Eric is such a great teacher. We see a 91% program completion rate. Now, I have a lot of friends who are in the personal growth business, and I can tell you most diets do not have a completion rate of that level. You will see many massively popular diets, uh, $100 million plus companies, well-funded, and they'll share these case studies. But if you actually look at the number of people who start and then drop out, it's 90% dropout rate. And I kid you not, 90% dropout rate. While it, it's split, it's almost a 90% success rate. And our graduates come from 123 countries. Now, one of the things we wanted to do is we wanted to create a special uh, version of WildFit. We do this once a year. And uh, so you can take WildFit self-guided, which means you go to the Mind Valley app and everything is there. But once a year, we want to get everyone joining together and go through it as a group challenge. And we call this the WildFit Wild Fit Food Freedom Challenge. And there are a couple of advantages to this. We'll come to this in a moment. One of which, of course, is when you're doing it as a group, you, um, you, you, know, you, you feel compelled to stick to it because you have allies. As a bonus for joining in this this but present time for WildFit, we'll also give you um, bonuses that will help you train your family on WildFit principles. All right. Now, what does it cost and how do you get started? So we have two options. You can take the WildFit program. So it's 13 weeks. The program itself is 12 weeks. Then there's like a final week um, where, where things wrap up. But altogether, it fits into three months. Three months is actually 13 weeks, not 12. So it fits into three months. So Eric will be guiding you through this, but it's all online. So Eric is not live. And then we have WildFit Group Coaching, which is 1497. So again, 899 or 1497. The difference is in the WildFit Group Coaching, you do it as a group. 
you're joining in on Zoom calls. Eric is going to be there. Some of Eric's facilitators will be there. Uh, Eric, give us an idea of some of the support that you provide live on the challenge. With uh, with the group coaching, what's really fantastic about it is that um, a number of things happen. One is that you really get to bond with the other people that are in your class because you're on Zoom calls together. And it's not webinar format. It's a Zoom call format where you actually get to know each other and so on. But of course, the real the real key to it is, is that you have a certified WildFit coach. And I want you to know something about this. Becoming a WildFit coach is not like one of these go to a website, fill out a form and get a certificate. It takes six months. It's an incredibly intensive education. Our coaches are unbelievably dedicated. They know their stuff. I just came back from Africa with 15 of them that came to stay with the hunter gatherer tribes that I've been visiting. That's how dedicated our coaches are. And so what that means is, is that you have somebody there who can help you both with accountability, because sometimes we need a little accountability uh, support, and also with tweaking and answering questions and helping you to really perfect what's going on. It improves the efficacy, efficacy of the program dramatically to have that level of support. Fantastic. Okay. And um, so you get live calls. And so you get to actually experience Eric live, their Q&As. And we just found that for many people, this extra level helps them complete it, helps them stay comfortable, helps them share their success stories. Um, we all like being part of a community. So there are 19 live calls in that 13 weeks. Eric appears in up to four live calls. So Eric will show up like every month, um, every few weeks, three and a half weeks roughly on a live call, but there are facilitators and coaches there to help you. So if you have a unique thing, maybe you, are, um, you have a particular food allergy, the coaches are there for you, okay? Now, um, and then there's group engagement. So you're on a Facebook group, a Telegram group on your choice. And there we are facilitators share little positive messages that help you, that help you stay on track, uh, that, that inspire you and keep you motivated to stick to the program. So there are two options. You can decide which one you want. If you want to go solo, you want to do it by yourself, take the 899 option. Or if you want to take the advanced option, you can do the 1497 option. Okay. And of course, you're learning from Eric. Eric has been uh, awarded by the Canadian Senate uh, a medal for his dedication to improving the quality of people's lives. Um, he's legendary for his uh, reporting of the lifestyle and, and for living with the Hadza tribes. He's been voted one of the top 25 most influential leaders in personal growth and achievement. And once again, Eric has actually personally helped many famous Mind Valley authors lose weight. Ken Honda on Mind Valley lost 20 pounds. Mary Diamond lost eight kilograms. And so a lot of our own Mind Valley authors trust Eric with their health goals. So again, decide which one do you think is right for you. Do you want to go solo or do you want, really want to go uh, and have weekly group coaching and have access to those facilitators? All right, now I have some good news for you. One of the things that I love doing at, Wild, at Mind Valley is when we discover great personal growth programs, because of our economies of scale, because we have millions upon millions upon millions of users, we can benefit from the economies of scale and we can lower the price. And so what we did is worked with Eric to make the to create a massive price drop. So you don't have to decide. What we'll do is we'll open up the advanced program to everyone. The group coaching program will be open up to everyone for the price of the basic program. So you get the 1497 program for the price of 899. Okay, so I hope you guys appreciate that. You don't have to make up your mind. We want all of you to win. All we ask is this, as you go through this program with our facilitators, with our coaches, remember you're doing it all as a group, we want to hear from you. We want your case studies. Um, we want to hear, you don't have to send us a before, after photo in your underwear if that's not your thing, but share with us a story. All I ask is if you, in exchange for this price drop, Go to stories.mindvalley.com and share a story. Now, some people might say, well, 899 is still expensive. And of course, I don't know your personal situation. Maybe it is for you. But let's look at the math, okay? If you're the average American and the majority of our users are from the US, roughly 55% of Mind Valley is American, you will spend in an average year $3,500 on your health. And that is, that is outside insurance, just like regular supplements, uh, prescription medication, doctor visits. So you're already spending a lot on your health. What if for this 899, you permanently shift your health? What would that mean to you? And by the way, 3,500 is just the baseline average. It includes 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds and young people as well. If you're older, it's probably a lot more. 
I remember going to a doctor once in San Francisco just for a bad back, just to get some painkillers. That was 250 bucks. And, but for so many of these things which are afflicting our health, food is what is causing it. And especially if you live in, in most of the world today that has the American diet, food isn't healthy. And so 899, when you put it in that perspective for a lifetime of better cognition, thinking, better energy, it pays for itself. Just from the increase in energy from wild fit and the increase in cognition, because the food you put also affects your brain, you will see many people, in fact, the vast majority of people see huge boost in their productivity. They get more work done in less time. So it pays off for itself. But if you cannot afford 899, we will have a three-month payment plan available, okay? So that'll be available for you. Now, it starts in Jan 29. We have 1,500 slots available. So I encourage you guys to sign up, all right? And that's where you got to go. Take a screenshot of that QR code or go to mindvalley.com forward slash wildfit. Please add forward slash special. That's where you get the discount. So forward slash wildfit forward slash special. Don't buy it from forward slash wildfit. You will get the standard offer. Please add that slash special. That's where you'll get the discount. All right. So thank you so much, guys. Um, Ramya, uh, could I invite you up, Ramya? Would you be open to running a Q&A with Eric? Or perhaps Eric, maybe you could you could run the Q&A. Yeah, I Absolutely. But it, it, Vishen, I think you could you tell me this tiered pricing thing? Because I think I, I don't really understand that. And I saw some people asking yes. about it. Can you let me, tell me let what me that have, means? Right. So so what we do is uh, our commitment as a company is to ensure equal opportunity to people of all countries. Right. So for certain countries like India, Indonesia, 899, maybe some the average person's annual income. So we give a discount because we want our community to be representative of the rest of the world. So in developing countries, you get a discount. That That's what it means. So if you're logging right, in- Right, and it's just India, recognized by their IP address right away. It's recognized by their IP address, right? You'll actually see a lower price. Cool deal. Fishin, thank you so much. And, and thank you for everything that you've done to help WildFit get out into the world. And I'm happy to- uh, Absolutely. Uh, stay, I, I'm going to share a little bit about some keys to transformation, and then I'm going to answer as many questions as I can. So I'm, I'm up. Thanks so very much, Fishin. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think that I am back. Although, um, let's see here. I'm just trying to get the, uh, there we go. I think you guys should see me again. I think the slides are gone. Um, so guys, I, I can't answer so many of the commercial questions relative to, to Mind Valley because I don't necessarily know all those things, but I definitely can tell you um, a couple of things that might help with some of the pricing questions that I'm seeing is that Yes, I understand that for some of you, it's an investment. I just want to point out that the average person, as Vishen is saying, uh, um, spends a, a, an amount of money on things like supplements, over-the-counter over, over counter the drugs, and certain types of food that they won't really typically buy so much anymore. So our average client reports a savings as a result of doing this. But I also want to point something out to you. Our money-back guarantee is, is dead simple. Do a minimum level of participation in the program. And if at the end, it isn't giving you what you want, if you didn't release weight the way you wanted to, or you didn't, or you don't feel better, or you don't notice that you're actually having a better budget around your food and, and that sort of stuff, you get your money back. So th th we've done everything we can to reverse the risk for you. And of course, now you get to upgrade automatically into a coach class to make sure you get all the results. So I hope you'll, you'll jump in and make that happen. Um, now, I'm going to answer a bunch of the questions that I saw. And then I'm going to try and go over to the QA thing here um, and, and answer some of those as well. So the first thing is, I saw this question quite a few times. Uh, will this help with diabetes? So I want to be really clear. I'm not here to offer medical advice. What I can tell you is that diabetes, and, and I have a book coming out in March all about this called Post-Diabetic. And what we are proposing uh, is that diabetes is an imbalance caused by not understanding those metabolic modes. If you get stuck in preparing for winter mode for too long, like some decades, then your body's not going to get very good at dealing with sugar and you're going to become pre-diabetic and move to diabetes. The bad news is that's an unbelievably horrible situation. And they don't tell you that. These days, it's like, oh, you're diabetic. We'll just give you some pills. What they're not telling you is, is that it's the highest risk factor for cancer, heart disease. It probably means losing um, limbs and digits to amputations. It means losing your eyesight early. It's a, it's a really, truly difficult and terrible disease. Here's the, here's the other good news is that while it takes a few decades to create it, 
it in most cases it can be reversed and turned around in in a period of about eight weeks. So my feeling is that absolutely uh, it, this program will support you in recovering from diabetes. And if you go on Amazon, you'll see Post Diabetic by Edmonds and Ruiz. And you'll it, unfortunately the book isn't there till March, but it makes the argument very well. In fact, many of you, how many of you guys know Mark Hyman? Mark Hyman, the doctor. He wrote the forward for the book. And one of the things he liked the most about the book and that you know made him really want to support us in it is that we ask in the book that we no longer look at diabetes as a disease. We look at it as a repetitive stress injury created by a metabolic imbalance from living in the wrong season. And, and so, yes, absolutely. If you are worried about diabetes, worried about blood sugar in, in a pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic position, I expect that you would see a marked and dramatic improvement, um, even by the time you get to about week nine or 10, for sure. I'm absolutely certain about that. Um, somebody else asked, is the program good for teens? Yes, it absolutely is. We've had some incredible home runs with teens. Um, the only challenge is they have to be a little bit more mature. You know, some of the content that we cover on the program is a little bit more mature. And they, the, the one trouble with being teens is that teens very often um, are unable to project their consciousness out to consequences in the future. And so we do a great job of that in the program. And so if you have teens that are, uh, that, they have one of two things going on. If they're in real trouble and they understand they're in real trouble, then they'll do very well. Or if they have big goals and they're motivated, then they'll do very well. And so I highly recommend that you get your teens involved. Uh, somebody asked, well, does this work for families? It works really well for families. In fact, I would say it works best when it's done by a whole family. But if you have like a husband or wife or kids that are not in for it, don't push them. Don't push them, don't try to pressure them because then all you'll do is, even if you get them to do it, is you'll have somebody doing it half-heartedly. What you'd rather do is get incredible results for yourself. And we have literally hundreds of stories like this where a husband or a wife, or even in one case that was, I remember personally, a teenage kid, 16 year old kid did the program. It blew his family away. They ended up doing it. So yes, if you can get your family enrolled and excited with you, that's great. If not, be the change you wanna see in your family. Um, uh, I, oh, somebody else wrote, is this just about keto? No, no. You know, the whole keto movement is basically trying to get you stuck in a metabolic mode, in one other metabolic mode. And it's not a bad metabolic mode to be in, but it's not a way of life. It's not the way you're supposed to be living. Keto, for those of you who don't know, means ketosis. It means that you have ketones in your system because your body is, is metabolizing fat. It's a season that you are meant to visit from time to time. It is not a way of life. And by the way, the other thing is, is that nowadays it's the same with paleo. Like the paleolithic idea is really good right up until they start producing keto pancakes and paleo pancakes. So, so no, this is not keto. Um, is there any special food or supplements required? No. I don't know how else to say that. No, you don't have to buy any special food or any special supplements. We will talk about the ideal foods to be eating. We will talk about some supplementation that you might want to look at at some time in the future. But the vast majority of you will find as a result of this program that your supplement prescription and over-the-counter uh, drug spend goes down dramatically as a result of this program. We've polled clients and they've told us that on average, they save $500 in their first year after WildFit from reducing supplements, over-the-counter drugs, and prescription medications. So uh, no, no special supplements, no special food. Um, oh, will there be like starvation? <laughs> People always wanna, are you gonna make me starve? No, absolutely not. In fact, if you're ever hungry on the next 90 days, if you're ever hungry, then you're doing something wrong. Like you're not following the instructions. You should never really actually be hunger, hungry. Now we will teach you in depth about the six core human hungers that drive your eating decisions. And we'll show you how to neutralize them. And we want you to eat a lot. So you will not be hungry. In fact, by the way, any of you, I know some of the people here have done Wild Fit before. Feel free to comment on this. Like, were you ever hungry? Did you, you know, like, it, it, did it work for you? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, Okay, are we gonna make you go to the gym? No, we're not. In fact, I'm gonna discourage you from doing intensive workouts and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. Um, particularly for women, intensive exercise raises your cortisol levels. And while the exercise can be generally good for you, the raised cortisol levels prioritizes the way you process sugar and it makes it harder for you to release weight. Now, in the long term, more muscle mass helps you to release weight. So 
you know, it, it, you actually do want to do some exercise in your life. But when you're in the weight release phase, if that's your primary target right now, no, you do not want to be doing really excessive um, exercise during the program. We will ask you to do something we call intentional movement. All that really means is, hey, skip the elevator every now and again, or at least skip the escalator, right? Like it's basic, basic stuff. You will not be pushed to do any intensive exercise. Um, the I saw here people asking about menopause. Um, in fact, WildFit has been so interesting and so significantly helpful in, in, in people in that menopausal window that I would just about guarantee you that you'll see improvement. Um, I'll offer a warning. Um, one of the warnings is, is that because it kind of resets your metabolic clock, and, and this is a little personal, but for any of you women that are in that stage where you're in the first 12 months of menstruation cessation, where you've stopped menstruating, um, when you go through the WildFit program, and I know I shouldn't say this because it doesn't help sell the program, but it's just the truth there's a very good chance your menstruation will restart because you're going to turn your metabolic age back a little. And that is a very common thing. And I know you might, you might not see that as, as a good thing, but it, it, it kind of is a good thing because it, it shows that you're resetting your clock and you're, and you're getting your metabolism right. Um, and, and so please, uh, if, if you're dealing with the various symptoms that come with that pre post and, and during menopausal stage, uh, yes, absolutely. I feel like you're going to get great results as a result of it. I saw that question a lot in the field. And by the way, I'm just going to say this, that um, one of the things that happens when you go through metabolic change, both men and women, as men's testosterone, by the way, any of you men that are worried about testosterone, I fully expect that you're going to see an improvement in your testosterone production and the energy levels as you go through this. And one of the challenges is, is that when you're older, it's hard in nature, it's harder to get food. So your body becomes better and better at storing fat, right? And it needs less and less muscle. So it starts releasing muscle if you're not working it. And the less muscle you have, the slower your metabolism is. And so the more fat you gain. Has anybody seen that pattern playing out in the population at all, right? Well, what I want you to know is you really are gonna turn your biological age back over that three month window. And what you're gonna find is that your hormone levels, generally speaking, I think are gonna improve and your energy levels with them, whether you're a man or a woman. But the even better thing about that is, is that your metabolism will improve such that it is easier for you to release weight and harder for you to put it back on. That's a very big distinction. And, uh, and somebody else just asked, well, if we're not supposed to exercise, will you give us advice about that? Yes, we'll talk all about what type of exercise is a good idea and when it's a good idea to do it, but it will not be over the next 90 days. That's not where we're gonna get you to do that. Um, all right, uh, what else? Okay, now I'm going over to the Q&A window. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, Mark, I believe that this class, if you, go to the, if you go to the registration page, all the dates are there. I think it's January 29th. I think you're right about that. Um, then, um, let's see here. How to lose weight while breastfeeding. So this is a really um, very specific question. And what I'm going to say, I'm going to answer it very briefly. We answer that this always comes up during the program, during the Q&A sessions, and you'll get a lot of feedback about that. What I'm going to say is that um, when you write your relationship with food and you write your, your metabolism, your body naturally wants to go to the healthiest weight for it. You see, if you've been telling your body for a long time, winter is coming and you've been making a baby, then your body's like, holy crap, winter's coming and I'm making a baby. I better store a lot of weight. When you start switching that metabolic mode and, the, and breastfeeding, your body will very comfortably and very naturally release the weight. The problem is for most women, they go into fall after they birth the baby and they continue to tell their body that winter's coming. So we want to move away from that. I hope that helps. Um, I'm a 56 year old woman and a mother. Will Listen, Veronica, I mean, look, our program, we've had people from all walks of life from, from, from you know, nine years old to uh, no kidding in the 90s. But I can tell you that the segment of the population that we've had the, the, the most attraction with, that we've done the greatest work for, has been women exactly in the age group that you're talking about. Um, you know, the, 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 the way your metabolism works as a woman is as you start moving into that age bracket, your metabolism starts to slow down. It becomes hard to keep the weight off. And that's because the food industry is taking advantage of you. And so, Veronica, yes, it absolutely will help you. I'm certain of that. Uh, Harman, um, does the program address or explore barriers around uh, accessing a healthy diet, such as food availability, emotional eating? Absolutely. Listen, something you need to know about this program is this, no, this program is not um, just a bunch of dietary rules. 
You remember Vision told you it has like a 90% completion rate. I want you to think about that for a minute. Vision tells a really cool story when he first did WildFit that he was driving along in his car and then he, and he pressed play on his next education program and it was WildFit. And so he heard me come on and go, hi, it's Eric Edmies. Welcome to day 66 of WildFit. And suddenly he realized something. And this is his own words. He'd never done anything. He'd never done a program for 66 days in his life. He's like, why am I still here? And that's because the way the program is built, it's built on something called behavioral change dynamics. And so it is done with incremental education that allows you to build from just exactly the way children learn languages. It allows you to build a little bit here and there and build skill, build self-esteem, and it's delivered in a really entertaining and engaging way. So yes, it will address things like food availability. It will absolutely, I'm telling you, within two weeks, Harmon, within two weeks, you will have an understanding about your emotional eating patterns that will make you feel like you are a practical psychologist of your own life. The first two weeks will teach you more about you and your relationship with food, and frankly, you and your relationship with the world than maybe any other program can. So yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. You said mind control is not important, Neela. Neela, I think what you mean is that in the in, is that we talk about not having to use willpower all the time. So let me share something with you about willpower. Willpower is a terrible way to try to improve your health if you use it badly, and it's an outstanding tool if you use it properly. And here's the clue: willpower is not something you're meant to be exercising all the time. Willpower is something you use to make decisions. So some of you will use willpower to make the decision to join the program. And then some of you will use willpower to watch the first couple of videos because it's like new. But by about the third video, you will no longer need to use your willpower because you will want to watch the videos. You're, you, I'm, I'm telling you, and by the way, anybody who's done WildFit, comment on this if you're here. If anybody who's done WildFit is still here, comment on that. It, it, does the program pull you through it? I'll give you an example of this. You've all had a book that you've had to read and you had to like push your eyes down the page, right? Like I have to read it and I'm pushing my eyes. But how many of you have had a book that pulled your eyes down the page so much so that somebody had to yell at you to come and get you to come and have dinner, right? Like you have to come and have dinner. Well, this program is built like that. It's built in such a way that it will pull you through. It will, for most of you, be one of the easiest programs you've ever followed ever in terms of your desire to watch the videos every day. And that same tool will happen to you with food. I'm telling you that by about Thursday of week two, you will already start to feel that you don't have to resist a particular food, but that you don't even really want it anymore. By the way, you guys tell me in a chat, if there is a food that you could stop wanting, what would it be? Like, it, mean, it doesn't mean you'll never have it again, but it, it would stop calling your name. It would stop whispering from the fridge. It would stop whispering when you're having a bad day. Sugar, ice cream, uh, 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 bread, cakes, pizza, burgers. I mean, look, we all have these foods that are whispering to us. And so, Neela, what we're going to use is short bursts of willpower at exactly the right moments to create long-term freedom so that ice cream doesn't call out to you anymore or chocolate or whatever the different thing is for you. Great question. Uh, let's see. Um, Lee, Lee, Leah, Leah, I think, Stanky. Um, it's really easy to lose weight if you're already overweight. My question is how to lose weight when you're already at a normal weight. I want to become slimmer and look the best I can. Yeah, listen, 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 Leah. You're, didn't you see Vision? Vision wasn't, say, overweight when he did the program. He just had more visceral fat than would be ideal. And by the way, you know what the hardest weight to lose is? the first few pounds and the last few pounds. The middle pounds actually aren't that tough. Once you've switched the metabolic switch and you've lost those first few pounds, then the rest of them can kind of gradually make their way off in a healthy way. But those last few, it's like your body's going, I don't know, I've trusted you up to now, but I feel like holding on to this last few pounds. Those ones are actually the hardest ones to, to, to release. And you already saw from Vision's own case study, from his own uh, uh, program that he was able to do that. So you'll definitely get the support and information you need to make that happen. Um, uh, Lillian, you're absolutely right. We do need to be aware of things like what's in the food, like the mercury that might be in fish and the pesticides that might be on your kale and the this and the that. But I want to share a principle with you that's very important about WildFit. Very, very important. Your health is far more 
uh, dependent upon you getting enough of the good stuff than you eliminating the bad stuff. You take a look at somebody who, for example, eats only the good stuff and never eats the bad stuff, but we remove the vitamin C from their good stuff, they're gonna get sick. And so that's the first principle to understand is that your number one job is to get enough of the good stuff in. But then the next thing is, is to understand that while the food industry has been manipulating us to eat too much of the bad stuff, the diet industry has been manipulating us to join ever more diets. And so they keep on coming up and going to avoid these five dangerous foods. Don't eat this and avoid this food if you want to achieve that. And all of those are internet hooks that are designed basically to sell you diet programs and supplements. I'm not saying we don't need to be aware of those things. What I'm saying is first, we have to make sure that we get our nutritional needs met. So if you're in a room and there's a bit of smoke in the room and you need to breathe, you're gonna have to breathe. You can't just go, well, I think there's a little smoke in the room, I can't breathe. No, you're gonna have to. And then you're gonna have to find your way to a better room. We're gonna show you how to navigate the room that you're in, and then we're gonna show you how to get to an even better room. Uh, Juan Pablo, I do understand that this works for people living in the Northern and Southern hemispheres, but what of us that are equatorial? Okay, one, this is very important and I want everybody to hear me because his question means there's something I didn't explain as well as I would have liked to. This is not about the seasons where you live. It's not about that. These metabolic modes evolved for sapiens to help us get through the natural seasons that we evolved in. And those seasons are the ones we're trying to mimic. So if somebody is living equatorially and they don't really have seasonal fluctuation, they still need to trigger those metabolic modes. It's still important that you have a fat uh, storing season and that you have a fat releasing season and that you have a protein burning season. You need all of those. It doesn't matter where you live. Uh, if you live in, in Alaska, it doesn't matter that you have this long, uh, you know, cold winter. It, that's a totally different winter than we're talking about. We're talking about your metabolic modes. And one way to think of that, as I mentioned, is if you're preparing for some kind of a sporting event or you're preparing to study for exams, you can think about which modes are going to help you to get there. And you can adjust your, your lifestyle accordingly and then never diet ever again. And by the way, who wants to never diet ever again? Is anybody in that category? Never, ever, ever again? <laughs> like, cause that's done. By the end of this, you will never go on a diet again. It'll never happen. All right, next one, Ozempic. Ozempic, hey, can I ask you guys, and by the way, we're over time now, so if you gotta go, I totally get it. I'm, I'm gonna hang out with you for a little bit longer because, well, because I want it. I wanna ask, how many of you are contemplating or thinking about Ozempic? If, you're, if you don't, I mean, look, I'm asking you for medical information. You don't have to say. But how many of you are contemplating, thinking about, curious about Ozempic? I'm just curious. All right. So there is some. All right. Listen, guys, I want you to know something about diabetes. And it relates to Ozempic. There are two different gentlemen who developed pure, uh, who developed um, um, uh, treatments for diabetes. They're both named Banting. One developed a diet that prevented and cured diabetes, and the other guy was the inventor of insulin. Both of these guys were so motivated to help people that were overweight and diabetic that they gave their inventions away. They, they, the guy who created the, the diet program, the Banting diet program, he created a, this, this, uh, this concept, and he, he sold the book and gave all the money to charity because he just wanted to get this message out into the world. And his relative, the next Banting, invented insulin and sold the patent to the University of Toronto for $1 because he believed that every diabetic on earth had a fundamental right to access diabetes. Medication that would support them to access insulin. Somewhere between their generosity and today, diabetes has become one of the most profitable industries in the world. Can anybody tell me how much diabetes is worth in America this year, 2024? Does anybody know the number? Four, it starts with a four, hundred billion dollars. Four hundred billion dollars for a disease that is reversible in six to eight weeks, but a lot more profitable if you have to take medication for the rest of your life. And now they're trying to do the same thing with obesity. So look, I can tell you about all the side effects of Ozempic. I'm not going to bother. Google them for yourself. Tumor development and pulmonary problems. I, I, no, I'm not going to do it. You guys go figure your own side effects. But let me tell you one of the problems is that the way Ozempic gets its results is by melting away all of your weight, not just your fat. 
So you actually lose muscle density while you're on there, which guess what? Slows your metabolism, which guess what? Helps you to gain more weight, which guess what? Is going to make damn sure that you're on Ozempic for the rest of your life. And you're going to be part of the next massive creation of multimillionaires and billionaires in the pharmaceutical industry. What I want you to know is that they know they know about the metabolic modes and they know that if you know about the metabolic modes that you won't need their drugs and they are going to advertise as best they can. And guess what, by the way, who are the people that, that, that own our pharmaceutical companies? Same damn people who own the food industry. One hand washes the other. They're feeding us the food that causes us to need the medication that they sell. So no, I'm not a big fan of Ozempic and I'm deeply disappointed in Oprah for, for going in that direction and, and, and publicly going out there and advertising it. It wouldn't surprise me in the least, like she owns a big chunk of, 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 of uh, Weight Watchers and apparently she owns a big chunk of, of uh, Oatly, which is just sugar milk. And, 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 and now I imagine she owns a big chunk of Ozempic. I, guys, sorry, you got me a little angry with that question. <laughs> let, me, let me draw it back a little. All I'm gonna say is this, if by chance you've surrendered to the idea and you are currently on Ozempic or you're going to take it, then what I suggest you do is you supplement it with lifestyle revision. You do wild fit because otherwise Ozempic is going to become something you're probably going to need forever. If, if What I really want to say to you is just stop it. I'm not your doctor. I can't, I can't give you that medical advice, but that's what I'd like to say is just stop it. But if you're going to do it, then you got to understand that if you don't change what caused the problem in the first place, then you're going to be stuck with that medication forever. If you change what caused the problem in the first place, and that is understanding your metabol your metabol your metabolism and your metabolic modes, then what will happen is maybe you use it for a short period of time to get a short-term result, but then you change your lifestyle so you never have to use it again. Does that feel fair, guys? Is that a fair way to address it? I hope I haven't been a little... Uh, a little too heavy on that for you. All right, more questions. Um, I'm trying to keep track of the chat, but I'm really going after the Q&A engine as much as I can. Um, let's see. How do you organize the modes to accommodate weight loss? Well, Judy, you know, um, the, 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 the basic answer to that is something that in WildFit we call natural nutritional rhythms. And that is to understand that our digestive systems evolved to optimize our food uh, production or our, our food processing inside our bodies based on the way our ancestors ate. And so when you understand these, these metabolic modes, you, you, you begin to realize the best way to move between them and the best time periods to spend on them. So clearly the, 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 the season that's going to do the very best work around helping people release weight is the season of spring. Now that doesn't mean somebody should live in that spring mode forever, but it means that they definitely want to, to spend more time in that season as they are on that weight release journey. And the, the structure of the Wild Fit program is to introduce you to these seasons in gentle, incremental, proven ways so that you, 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 you can get the best benefit from them. So you will experience spring in the best, most successful way possible. Uh, and, and, and by the way, uh, you know, when, when the keto fad first came along, I remember Tim Ferriss talking about it and saying that only 10% of people ever managed to achieve a good level of ketosis um, for a very short period of time before they, and that's because they try to do it using willpower and they do it badly with the wrong advice. We're going to get you there in beautiful incremental steps so that you will get the result. You will switch your metabolic mode and you will include, basically improve your uh, metabolic health. Uh, Shelly, you're welcome. Uh, oh, wait a minute. What about hormones and postmenopausal weight? I think I've already kind of addressed that, but Shelly, I'm just going to say this. Yes, one of our biggest demographics, one of our largest areas of success are women in that bracket that have started to put on that 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 sort of menopausal weight and and really rebalancing their hormones and putting them in a much better position around that. My, one of my favorite favorite comments was from a friend of mine, Tara, who did the program, and she wrote to me and she goes, "I'm I'm 40 whatever it was years old, 47 years old or so," and she says, "And I am grateful because for the first time since I was in high school, I'm going to the to the beach in a two piece swimsuit," and she goes, "I know that's a bit shallow." And I can also talk to you about that I feel better and the hot flashes are gone and all of that stuff. But the truth of the matter is being comfortable in my own skin is more valuable to me than anything. So yes, is the answer, Shelly. Uh, Megan, how do you know what foods to eat and when? Do you only eat foods during that season? Megan, this is a very good question. And again, I want to reiterate that it's not what's seasonally available around you. 
It's about you choosing to trigger a certain season. So if you want to say somebody's getting ready to do an endurance race, a friend of mine ran nine marathons in seven days in the Sahara. Well, maybe you're not going to go that intense, but if you are going to go um, and prepare for some endurance thing, then you probably want to trigger the fall metabolic mode to store some, some extra fat. So what does that mean? Well, what would our ancestors have done? They would have eaten more fruits. They would have eaten more carbohydrates, more root vegetables, more honey, more carbohydrates generally. So what you do is you look at your goals and then you choose the season that you want to be in relative to your goals and move between the seasons like that. And of course, you get a, you, you'll fully understand this by the time you've completed the 90 days, because not only, you know, there's an old Chinese expression to know and not to do is not to know. How many of you guys know some stuff about food and diet, but you're not doing it. So it means you really don't know it that well, right? Well, by the end of this program, you will know it and you will know it because you will have done it with the guidance. And remember, because of the way Mindvalley's done this, you all get to join the coached cohort. You all get to be part of that. That's really, really exciting. Uh, Benny, uh, so what foods do you recommend to eat in the winter? Well, Benny, winter is a, a, a season really of um, very low carbohydrates and basically um, calorie restriction. We recommend that we activate winter through various forms of, of fasting. And that's not something that you have to do during the 90 day program. That's not at all. You'll be taught about it. You'll be shown how it works and you'll be given an option to test out a winter season during the program, but it's not required during the program. It's just, you, you will learn all about it. And you'll understand it. And, um, and, and you might, you might decide to experiment with it and try it. Many of our clients do, and they absolutely love it, especially if they're dealing with some inflammation problems, that sort of stuff, very helpful for that. Um, I don't know about the recordings, guys. I'm sorry. You'll have to talk to Mind Valley about that. Uh, will we get clear instructions on what to eat and how to improve metabolism? Yes, yes, yes. The program itself, the core videos are going to guide you through what to eat and you're going to add some things in and then you're going to take a holiday from other things. And, and, and all of those adjustments are going to be there to change your food psychology and to change your metabolism in a nice, carefully constructed incremental program that we've been running now for over 10 years with unbelievable success with over a hundred thousand clients. It, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's dialed in and it works. Um, okay. I've answered that. I'm a business owner. My time is limited. Yeah. Hey, Walt, Walt says, Hey, I'm a business owner. My time is limited. Can I, can I, can I make this work? Walt? I'm going to tell you something. My original claim to fame as a teacher is when I decided to get involved in teaching business. I got a random phone call one day from Anthony Robbins' company asking me if I would come and teach entrepreneurship at his programs. And so I toured with Tony teaching business at his business mastery programs for about a year, maybe a little longer. And then one day I just said, I fell in love with it. I love teaching. I love taking people out of pain and improving their quality of life. And so I decided to become a teacher and I started teaching entrepreneurship through businessfreedom.com. So I was teaching, matter of fact, for those of your Mind Valley members, go and check out my business freedom blueprint right there in the Mind Valley membership, included in membership. It's there to help you create a phenomenal business life. Well, Walt, here's the funny part. I created WildFit for them. When I first created WildFit, it was just for them. You couldn't even buy it. There was no website. It was only for my business clients. It was part of my business coaching. But they started telling their friends and their friends started looking at them going, you look fantastic. How did you do that? Well, I did this wild fit thing with Eric. And it was only because of that, that I then ended up having to, um, that I then ended up having to, uh, to actually open it up to the public. And then by word of mouth, it just, it just, it just grew. We went from, you know, like 200 or hundred uh, business clients a year to suddenly a thousand clients and then 5,000 clients and so on. So yes, absolutely. It can work for business, business people. No question about it. Um, let's see here, Sonia King, if you don't want to lose weight, but just eat health, is this a good quest to participate in? Oh yeah, Sonia, listen, listen, listen. This is not a weight loss program. It happens to be the most effective weight loss program there is, but it's, we never designed it for weight loss. We never designed it for type two diabetes reversal. It just happens to do that because you are creating, first of all, a healthy nutritional life. And secondly, metabolic modes, right? Those two things are the key to physical health. I mean, they are the foundation. Yeah, you can improve upon them with exercise and you can improve upon them with, with meditation and all that stuff. But the foundation is, am I putting the right things in and I'm, am I putting them in in the right seasons? So, so for, you know, some people will go on wild fit and actually gain weight. 
But this particular webinar was targeted toward people looking to release weight because Vishen noticed immediately in his own staff and in his own family and his own members that it was so good at weight, weight loss. So this webinar was aimed at weight loss. And so that's why a lot of the conversation is about that. We have many clients that come because they want to bulk up and they want to build muscle. Uh, it, it, it is not... Uh, this is not a weight loss program. It is a health program that will help right size your body. And if that means releasing weight, then it will. Great question, Sonia. Uh, does wild fit food recommendation, do wild fit food recommendations include locally sourced food in Malaysia? Yeah, and Natasha, I mean, yes, of course, you're going to have to deal with what's available in your given country. There's no question about it. And yes, you'll be able to make that work. We have lots and lots of clients in Malaysia and in India where they've had similar questions about that. Um, it, we're... We're, we're, and by the way, there's a large wild fit community all around the world. So for example, we have coaches that are, that are in these various countries around the world that can even uh, provide like, you know, more specific advice about given countries and available foods. Um, let's see, can we access the wild fit program for existing member? No, the, the, the core wild fit program is not part of the wild fit all access program. Um, it, it just, it never has been. We've been in partnership for a long, long time promoting WildFit this way, and it's not a, core, a current part of the core WildFit program. And I think that's one of the reasons that that, my, that, that Vision did this thing of saying, hey, we're going to just upgrade you to the coached cohort um, to, to make it as easy as possible for you to do it. Um, all right. Guys, I, I see so many of you are still here. So I, I do you guys, are there like, I, I'll, there's more questions in the Q&A, but I, 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 I don't want to like, uh, overstay my welcome. Are you guys up for a little more? Do you have more stuff you want to talk about here? Uh, congratulations, Deborah. Congratulations. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I'll, I'll go a little longer. Uh, does WildFit work with the Ramadan period? Well, uh, for yes, it does. And you know what happens for a lot of clients is they go like, I don't want to do WildFit th this particular time because there's Christmas or because there's Easter or because there's Ramadan or because there's Diwali or the, you know there's some festival. Here's what I want you to know. This is very important. It's actually best to do wild fit when life challenges are going to come up because then you will have handheld, your hand held as you're transitioning through that phase. So yes, absolutely. You can go through the holiday seasons uh, while you're going through the wild fit program because it will teach you to navigate those seasons in the most effective way. Uh, so yes, uh, you certainly can do that. We, we frequently have clients that are going through a variety of the different celebratory and holiday periods during the, during and, 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 um, and religious experiences throughout the year. So yes, for sure, you can do that. Um, is it based on a vegetarian diet? BB, no, it is not based on a vegetarian diet. And I want to be very clear that we have thousands of vegetarian and vegan clients. Now, that might seem a little odd, and here's the deal. What I'm going to say to you is that WildFit is based on what you call nutritional anthropology. The idea that there is a core set of nutritional requirements that all humans have, but there are different paths to achieve those things. Now, I happen to be of the belief that it is easier to achieve those goals when you have animal products in your diet. But if you have chosen for some reason not to have those, then we will support you in the program and we have some special advice about how you make that work. So uh, we have, we, we, the program is not vegan. It is not uh, uh, vegetarian, but it is also not, um, let's say ideologically not so. So we have, we have very many of our clients that have gone through the program as vegetarians and vegans. And, and some of them become a little bit more flexitarian because they want to experience stay with eggs or fish or something like that as they're going through the program. We will support your decision about that. And we'll tell you the truth. We'll give you all the information you need to have to make a really good decision about those things. Great question. Uh, DM says, is there a special discount for Mind Valley members? If you missed that part, yeah, Vision did this thing this time. I don't, I honest, I don't think he's ever done it before, but you automatically get to join the coached cohort. Um, you don't have to pay the upgraded amount. So you automatically get upgraded to go to the live coaching calls and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, there you go. That's a great question. Can a person remain on keto for 20 years? And you, this is a great theoretical question. The answer to that is, yeah, I guess they can. I mean, you've seen, can people stay in non-keto for 20 years? Yeah, they can too. But both of those permanent modes would come with consequences. Humans evolved for cyclical eating patterns. And so if you get stuck in one mode, it's going to cause problems. 
Now, because most people have not lived in keto for 20 years, we don't fully understand the consequences of doing that over a 20 or 30 year period. But we do know the consequences of staying in a sugar mode for 20 or 30 years. It's called obesity, diabetes, and other diseases, right? So in WildFit, we talk about these metabolic seasons because we do not recommend that you stay in any one given season for 20 years or, or, for, or for such a long period of time. Um, Cassandra follows up with the question for vegans or vegetarians. I'll say this, she asks, is it suitable? As I've already answered, yes, it is. But will it be, um, are there certain struggles we may face? Yeah, you will. You'll face the reality struggles of the vegetarian or vegan choice, which is to say that um, getting complete amino acids, getting all of the amino acids and getting certain vitamins is a little bit more challenging in the vegetarian vegan world than it is in, in the non-vegetarian vegan world. And we will support you through that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, jo Joy Lita, which food groups do we have to eliminate during the program? Wheat, dairy. You, oh, that's a great question. You don't have to eliminate any. Okay, is anybody shocked? Is anybody surprised? You don't have to eliminate any. And, 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 and I want to be very clear. We will ask you to take a break from certain things. We'll ask you to take a break from this or that. We might ask you to take a break from purple foods with yellow spots, but we're only ever asking you to take a break from them. We're not forbidding them. WildFit is a culture of freedom, liberty, personal freedom. I believe in that. And so WildFit is about giving you that freedom. So I'm not here to tell you, you can never have a Cinnabon ever again. It's not, it's not in my nature to say that to you. What's in my nature is to say, hey, could you take a break from Cinnabon this week? Could we take a break? Just take a break because I want to introduce you to some new levels of consciousness so that in the future, you will make more conscious decisions. You might make a decision that you don't want that anymore. I would support that, but you don't have to give up anything. We are going to give you food freedom. Great question. And I hope you enjoyed that answer. It's a very good answer and I'm, I'm proud of it because it works. Um, how do we trigger the different medical, the metabolical mode, metabolic modes and when? Uh, great question, Silva. I'm of course going to say to you, it's a little bit of a more complex conversation that I can have in a quick Q&A session. Um, and of course, it's fully addressed inside the 90 day program. But here's the deal. Um, the short version is, is that our ancestors switched metabolic modes based on the environmental conditions around them. So what we have to then do is trick our body by changing the environmental conditions, particularly the foods that we're eating. Here's a crazy example. For our ancestors, being near water meant abundance because there was fish and, and seafood if you were by the sea and, and there was hydration and so on. To this day, scientific studies have been very clear about this. Simply sitting beside water reduces your cortisol levels right? Like it, it's insane. Like we have water running out of the taps in our house. We don't need to sit beside water to create that feeling of abundance. And yet your body's DNA, your epigenetic expression says, if I'm sitting beside this water, I will switch modes and I'll reduce my stress levels, right? Same thing here. If you start eating a lot of carbohydrate foods, you're going to put yourself into the met metabolic mode of autumn, which is winter preparation. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see here. Again, uh, Andreas, it's not about the seasons where you are. It's just about understanding that your body has these modes. We're going to show you how to activate those modes to achieve your health goals and also your activity goals. Uh, Benny, can you become a certified wild fit coach? Yes, there is a model for doing that. Um, if you haven't done the program before, do the program first. It's required. You actually have to have gone through the program to become a wild fit coach. Um, and so first step is go through the, the program and then become a coach. You can actually go to the Get Wild Fit site and click the Become a Coach page, but they'll charge you more for it if you haven't done the program before. So you may as well just get do the program now and then you'll get information at the end about how to become a wild fit coach. I will say this, it is not easy. It is a it is a strenuous program with lots of study um, and 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 an exam. We don't just rubber stamp certify people. We our coaches are well trained. Um, let's see. Zazuzi says there is a city of say twenty million. So, sorry, Zazuzi says there is a city of twenty million population. Are you in in Kinshasa? I was just in Kinshasa, and holy cow, twenty million people. But anyway. Uh, how can people follow seasonal eating patterns because there's supermarkets everywhere? Um, okay, listen, the issue is, look, 
If the food industry feeds you and determines when and what you eat, you're going to be sick. And this is true whether you are livestock or whether you are a pet or a zoo animal or a human being. If the food industry decides what you eat and when you eat, you're going to be sick. You have to learn what to eat and when to eat and to create those structures for yourself. So it doesn't matter what city you're in or what supermarkets are there. If you, for example, have made the decision that I'm going to be in spring this week, then you're not going to go and buy bananas, even though they're there. You know what? Mother nature would have done that for you in the old days. Oh, no bananas anymore. You're in spring. Now we need to make those decisions. That's what we use our willpower for, to switch the seasons. Once we're in the season, we have food freedom. We don't, we don't, we don't stick on the willpower. Um, let's see here. Can 10-year-olds do wild fit too, Var, Var, uh, Vardanush? Yeah, absolutely they can. I would recommend it's better that their parents are doing it with them so they get the support and food preparation. But absolutely, we've had entire families do the program together. Uh, Martha, if you go to getwildfit.com and, and go to the find a coach page, you can see the whole list of coaches, reach out and talk to one. Um, if anybody here, if any of our coaches happen to be on the webinar, uh, feel free to reach out to Martha. She'd like to talk to you. Um, Mel, please give tips for dementia. You know, Mel, I'm just going to say this, and it's a longer conversation. We could do a whole webinar just on dementia. We could do the, 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 the whole webinar just on that. But I'm going to say this. I was speaking at a conference a while ago and, and, and another guy was speaking there and his name is uh, Dr. David Perlmutter and he's written some of the very best books on metabolic health. And after he and I spoke, he came up to me and he goes, Eric, the way you're describing the metabolic seasons and modes is exactly what we just did a, 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 a research paper on that was being submitted that week for peer review. And basically what I was suggesting is, is that because our ancestors had seasonal access to sugar, the sugar came in, sugar went out, sugar came in, sugar went out, that that had a massive impact on brain health. So my, my main tip for you on dementia is to have a healthy relationship with carbohydrates to develop a healthy metabolism. And of course, the best way to do that, understand metabolic modes, spend 90 days with me and it'll be taken care of. Uh, let's see. Wow. So many more here. Um, I've already answered this, the question about if I don't want to lose weight, is it still good? Yes, this is not a weight loss program. It just is the best one. Um, somebody was again asking about tiered pricing. Go to the page that Vision uh, uh, showed with you. Go to the registration page and it will demonstrate for this the pricing for you in the region you're in. And please, guys, don't go in America, use a VPN and try to get India pricing. Uh, you know, we're going to see the credit card. So we've done that because there are countries that live in different economic realities and we have worked tirelessly over the last 15 years or last 10 years, I should say, to get wild fit to everybody around the planet that we can. So your IP address will show them where you're from and you'll get the right pricing, pricing if you're in South Africa or India or wherever it happens to be. Um, are the recipes time consuming? You know, they can be if you decide to take a lot of joy in them or not. That's really up to you. I recommend that you take as much responsibility for the purchasing and the preparation of your food as possible because the food industry, right from the food manufacturer down to the restaurant, they're interested more in profitability they, than they are in your health. So their goal is to make the food super yummy, addictive, and nutritionally empty so that you want to eat more. If you get responsible for your own uh, food, then it's going to be great, much better. Does WildFit cover, cover the gut biome, uh, the, the, the gut microbiome, um, yes, we talk a lot about that. And, and I'll tell you something magical about that. There's a lot of like sort of leaning toward, oh, I got to go get my gut biome tested and that's going to tell me what foods I'm good at and what have you. It mis that, that, that general idea, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of truth to it, but it, it misses one really important point. And that is that your gut biome changes with the seasons. So if you are in if you're not a vegetarian and you're in a hunting season like spring and you're eating a lot of meat, then you have one gut biome makeup. If you are in fall and you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, then you have a different gut biome. But if you get stuck in fall, then your gut biome is going to go out of balance and you're going to end up with potentially candida overgrowth. So the one of the very best ways to have a healthy gut biome is to run through these metabolic modes so that you kill off the candida overgrowth by going into one season and then you come out and go into the other one. So yes, absolutely. Um, Absolutely, you're going to get a lot of support about gut, gut biome and uh, and um, a gut biome biodiversity. Stein says, "I have aching joints. Will WildFit program help?" I truly believe that it will. I I can't make a promise, but look, if it doesn't, get your money back. I truly believe that it will. 
one of my dear friends did the program years ago and we were having a conversation and she was telling me that she didn't have any weight to lose. She, she actually had been a very high level professional model for many years. She was still in very good shape. She didn't do the program for that. She did it for other reasons. Um, and then all of a sudden she was saying I was sleep her sleeping was better. Her cravings were better, all that sort of stuff. But then she goes, oh my God, Eric, I totally forgot. I go, what? She goes, my fingers, I can use them again. Like I, they were so sore that if I made a fist, it would like make me crawl out in pain and, and the pain's gone and the pain is so gone that I forgot that I ever had it. Yeah, so I do believe that um, the spring season is the ultimate season for the reduction of inflammation and the reducing of pain in your joints. Um, so yes, I think you're gonna get great results. Uh, user 577592, I hope your parents didn't name me that. Um, I have candida overgrowth. Will this course help me to cure it? Yes, I am certain it will. Listen, what is candida overgrowth? It's being stuck in one season for too long. When you start to move through the metabolic modes, then you fix that problem. Can you please tell me the details of the program? SMF says, does it use food psychology, hypnosis? Well, I will say that it uses very advanced food psychology. I've had people come through the program with master's degrees in psychology and go, I just learned some things about psychology. It also uses um, some hypnotic language patterns. There is no actual hypnosis. Uh, we use some, um, uh, some language patterns from neurolinguistics and we use most importantly, what we call behavioral change dynamics, which is a system of course structure that I use. And any of you have done any of my other courses, you probably found them um, quite easy to complete. We make them sticky and we use this system to make the courses like that, to guide you through and make the courses actually transformable, transformative. Um, I believe in transformative education. I believe that every teacher should take 100% responsibility for making their information sticky. And that's what I do. So yes, I, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, what happens after the program? Oh, I'll tell you what happens after the program. After the program, first of all, in week 13, you are um, given a crash course on how to live the wild fit lifestyle. What I mean is, is a review of everything you've done for the last 12 weeks is recapped for you in the 13th week, guiding you through the processes, reminding you about the seasons and what we call the season ratios. And so you are given the tools to support yourself going forward and you will go off into your life. Will you regain weight? Well, that's up to you. You'll understand the seasons. The vast majority of our clients do not. Mind Valley, can you guys confirm that I'm still connect reconnected? Yes, Eric, we can hear you. And uh, we still okay. have 500 people with us. Okay, good, good. I'm, I I want to answer some more. I'm so sorry that happened, guys. I don't know. My laptop just crashed. and and But here's the deal. I'm on my phone now, so I can't see the questions. Can you moderate for me and send me some of the questions from the chat? Yes, absolutely, Eric. Uh, I'm looking That'd into be great. it. Um, so... Um, I'll tell you what, you start looking, I can see some of them. And, and if I run a blank, then you you, you have some ready for me, okay? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Eric, I actually have one question. How do you adjust for eating out in restaurants? That's a great question, you guys. It's a really great question. So I'm going to teach you a little hack. Um, first of all, I want you to think of the word menus. And I want you to say it another way, menus. What if we said menace? It's a menace. The menu is a menace. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of kidding around, but here's how I want you to think about the menu in a restaurant from now on. Assuming you're in a half decent restaurant, half decent at least, then I want you to think about the menu as a badly organized list of ingredients. A menu is a badly organized list of ingredients that are in the restaurant. So if you notice that over here, you've got the salmon and the thick cream linguine with the white pasta, salmon linguine over here. And then over there, you've got the, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, grilled broccoli and, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, another piece of salmon. So, you know, they've got broccoli, you know, they've got linguine, you know, they've got salmon, you know, they've got all this stuff. So now you go, well, you know what? I've noticed they've got broccoli over here with the with the with the, this dish, and they've got the salmon over there. Can I just have a grilled salmon and the broccoli? Now I know some of you are thinking, "Oh, I'm not brave enough to do that. I'm not brave enough to like you know ask them to modify my order for me." But I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person who's difficult at the restaurant. Okay, listen to me. That person who's willing to take charge of their diet. That person who's willing to take charge of their eating decisions. That person is way less likely to get cancer. That person is way less likely to gain weight. That person is way less likely to develop diabetes. That person is likely to be happy and healthy and to live a long life and a life that is not punctuated by frequent visits to specialist doctors and surgeons. So be willing to be that person and be willing to look at the, at the menu as a badly organized list of ingredients. Great, great question. Uh, Eric, we have another question. Uh, Alice is asking, is this an elimination diet? Is this an elimination diet? Um, no. I mean, traditionally, an elimination diet says that you give away everything. Like you, you take, you stop eating everything and then you slowly reintroduce certain things. There will be times during the program where we will ask you to um, increase your intake of some things and then we'll ask you to decrease your intake or avoid other things for a period of time. But no, it is not an elimination diet. Good question. Uh, so my Colette is asking, I need to put on weight. Will this help me? Okay, so it's a good question. Um, if you need to put on weight, I would say to you that while you're going through the 90 day process, you will not put weight on, you will not likely put on weight. You might put on a little bit in the first week or two or three or something like that, but you likely won't put on weight um, over the 90 days. But what you will learn over that period of time is how to adjust your metabolism so that you can put on weight. And, and I'll tell you one of the reasons is that if you want to put on weight, the weight you really want to put on is, um, is muscle. And because we discourage a lot of heavy exercise during the program, it makes it a little harder to put that weight on. Now, that said, if weight release is not at all a goal for you, then you are absolutely free to exercise as much as you want while you're on the program. And in that case, yeah, you may well gain weight while you're on the program. Okay, awesome. Um, is it okay to dip into cravings from now and then? Well, yeah, I mean, cravings are a very interesting thing. Um, some cravings are driven by your nutritional needs and other cravings are driven by um, emotional memories and, and emotional rules that you've created in your life. Um, by the end of about week four or five, you will no longer have cravings that are driven by nutritional needs. You, you, you just won't feel hungry in the same way that you did before. You just won't. But you will also have learned a great deal about your emotional makeup. And you'll understand what was driving your emotional cravings. And you'll have figured out how to neutralize them. So I feel like by about the Thursday of week two, you will notice a marked drop in your cravings. And by week four or five, most of your cravings will probably be gone or so quiet that they don't really have a big impact on you. Amazing. Uh, Yasmin has a great question. Are there adjustment sure. program for female versus male bodies? No, no, no. There, I mean, there is some discussion in the program where we'll say, hey, women might want to try a little bit more of that or a little bit less of this. We do talk about that. 
Um, but then when you get into week 13 and we talk about how to live this lifestyle, then we have more um, conversations about customization. Listen, there are differences with men and women, but the, the, the similarities are far more than the differences. What I mean is, is that we all require the same 13 vitamins and 16 minerals and nine amino acids and, and water and, and fatty acids. We all have the exact same requirements, but our lifestyle will affect those requirements to some degree. Somebody more active, for example, will have different requirements than somebody less active. So that will get addressed more in week 13 to kind of support how you choose to take the wild fit lifestyle into your life, male, female, marathon runner, or, you know, or, or, or stay at home mom or dad or whatever the case might be. Awesome. Uh, Eric, we can take uh, more questions. Is that okay? Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, should I stop caffeine? You know, um, caffeine is an interesting thing. Um, the, the way I look at caffeine is caffeine is a biohacking tool. But the trouble is, like many tools, if you use the tool too often and too regularly, it stops being useful. Um, for example, we all know that somebody who drinks a lot of alcohol, for example, needs more alcohol to get the same nice feeling, right? To get the same level of buzz or drunk. Well, caffeine's a bit like that. So if you're using caffeine regularly, well, I'll put it this way. I don't use caffeine, or I should say I use it very, very rarely. But when I do, I become a superhero. <laughs> I'm kidding. But like, I, I so rarely have caffeine that if I do have some, I'm like, boom, I explode and I get this huge burst of energy. But what happens for a lot of people is, is that they're using caffeine um, so regularly that they need caffeine just to be themselves. And so what I want to, what I will do on the program is show you how to create a conscious relationship with caffeine. And so, no, you don't have to give it up at all, but you know, maybe it might be a good idea to take a bit of a break from it for a while. And by the way, the more panicked you are about the idea that you might need to take a break from a little while, you know, you might need to take a break is an indication that you probably do need to take that break. Okay. Awesome. Um, we have a fitness question. Can I keep doing my weightlifting exercises uh, while I do wild fit? Okay. The answer to that is multi-pronged. If you are, um, if you are in the program predominantly to release weight, then I don't think that's a good idea, particularly if you're a woman. Um, and, and it's just a difficult thing, but certain types of exercise, for men are stress relieving and for women are stress causing. And I think this has to do with sort of a, a whole, an old historical relationship to hunting. Men had to go hunt and going out running long distances and lifting things is like, I'm making progress, I'm making progress. So their stress levels come down. If, if women are doing really seriously heavy, intense work, it's often because they're running away from something. And so it's more stressful. So that means that when a woman goes into the gym and does like say heavy, heavy weightlifting, that might cause an increase in, in stress chemicals and that might cause a slowdown of weight release. Now, long-term having muscle density can help, but we have found that during the wild fit um, challenge, during that 90 days, that generally it's better to reduce the exercise load. Now there is an exception to this. And, and I've been doing some research on this and I found some studies that indicate the theory, the, the theory I'm about to share with you holds water. And that is that it is not the physical movement that is causing women the stress. It's the mental focus. So when you're like deeply focused on lifting your weights, that's a stressful activity. If you go to an aerobics class and you're deeply focused on like maintaining the moves, then that's stressful and causes stress chemicals. But if you go to say a free form, well, let's say you go for a hike in nature or you go for a free form dance class, like a Zumba or a jazzercise type thing where you basically just move the way you want, that is not stressful and that actually can support the weight loss journey in a really powerful way. Awesome. Um, so Cynthia is asking, um, doesn't caffeine trigger stress? You know, caffeine is a natural insecticide. So what it's doing when it goes into you, it's a, it's a poison and your body's going, holy crap, I got to get this out. I got to get this out right now. And so you start producing adrenaline. Yeah, stress chemical. And, and, and it stays with you for a while. So it has an impact on your sleep quality and all that kind of stuff, which is why I don't believe in it as a daily lifestyle tool. I believe in it as, I'll tell you my situation. If I'm driving from, I don't know, say I'm in Canada and I'm driving from Calgary to Vancouver and it's a lot, a lot of driving and it's getting into the evening. Okay, maybe at that point, a caffeine injection might be a good idea to create uh, increased alertness. What would be better is pulling over and having a nap.
right? Um, another version is, is that, you know, sometimes I'm, I, I fly a lot and I'm traveling on tour and I land in a city and I've got a bunch of important meetings to go to and I, and I'm really groggy from the flight or what have you, then I might then do it. But I mean, I might do this four times in a year, right? I use it like a conscious biohacker, not like an addict. Noted. Awesome. Um, so, uh, I see Jane, I, I see Jane here asks, will it help with fertility? Jane, I love the real questions. I love the deep stuff. So I'm going to tell you something about this and it's really, really important. First of all, it will not only help with fertility, it will also help with sex drive. And, and, and there's a, there's a crazy thing that happens, but when you are, um, uh, when your metabolic uh, balance is off, then your energy is off and sex drive requires energy. So the better metabolic health you have, the better sex drive you have. Um, I, I, I like, and, and that's why sometimes we recommend that it's a good idea for a husband and wife to do the program together at the same time, because it's not so good when one person increases their sex drive and the other one doesn't. So there, yeah, absolutely. It can help with that side, but now uh, with fertility, yeah, I, I, I mean, anecdotally, I can tell you, we have countless stories of people who have been trying to get pregnant for years and years, trying all the different medical interventions, and then they give up and go through wild fit and get a surprise pregnancy. My favorite story about this, it's a true story, totally true story. One of my very earliest wild fit clients was actually a business client of mine, and he lost a lot of weight. Uh, uh, he, he really changed his life in a huge way. And one day I was in Sweden, he's from Estonia, and I was in Sweden and he was, uh, he was giving a talk and I was in the audience. And he starts talking about how he transformed his life in different ways with his business and so on. And then suddenly he starts talking about his family and, and his, he has a, quite a thick accent. And you have to know something about Estonian, that Estonian language doesn't have pronouns. How simple would that be, <laughs> right? But they have no pronouns, so they don't have he, she. They basically, I don't, I'm probably saying this wrong, but they basically just have it, right? They don't have he, she. So so, um, so as he's telling the story, he's like, uh, me and wife, try get pregnant many years, have two babies, then no more babies. Try all intervention, no babies, no babies, no babies. Give up. And then I do wild fit, come home one day, and wife, he tell me he pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes on to say that he jokes around that his wife said it was my fault that she was pregnant. And he checked my schedule to make sure that I wasn't in town. So it clearly wasn't my fault. But of course, it's all a big joke about the fact that when they changed their relationship with food, they became fertile again. And by the way, no kidding. They named the kid Eric. Well, an Estonian version of Eric anyway. So Jane, yes, I believe I can't promise you babies where there are none, but I can tell you that you um, really, truly give yourself the very best chance at getting pregnant and epigenetically raising a healthy baby by having a great relationship with food and your metabolism. Uh, Eric, we have one question uh, from Smita. If people are suffering from extreme weight gain due to uncontrollable side effects of medication, that are needed to deal with chronic and biological physiological conditions can can and will they still lose weight with the program okay i'm going to answer this question in two different ways the first one i'm going to say is please please do the program and please please make sure that you reach out to me and mind valley and tell us how it went for you um, I, and what I mean by that is I'd like to know what the medications are and I'd like to know how the program works for you because I think you'll be an outstanding case study. So I'm imploring you to please do that. If it doesn't get you the results that you need, if it doesn't make things better, get your refund. Like just, but please do the program. Now let me actually answer your question. Um, I don't, I can't give you medical advice. I, I, I am not a doctor. And, and, and even if I was a doctor, I can't give medical advice to you because you wouldn't be my patient. I can't give you medical advice. And also, as I don't know what the medications are that you're asking about, and I don't know what the physiological conditions that you're treating with those medications are, I can't really comment on that either. But what I can tell you this is that Wild Fit is guided by a series of principles. One of those principles is that no matter what disease or injury you are dealing with, your body's capacity to manage, deal with, recover from, and even heal that disease will be directly related to your relationship with your metabolism and with your nutrition. It doesn't matter what the injury is. If you've sprained your ankle, you're going to heal better if you have a healthy relationship with food and a good metabolism. If you've just had surgery and you want to heal faster, you're going to heal faster 
because you have a great relationship with food and you're using the right metabolic mode. I had, um, I had all of my wisdom teeth extracted and the surgeon told me afterward, after at my one week exam, that I had healed by three weeks in one week because I had used the right metabolic mode and the right nutrition. If somebody has a disease like diabetes or obesity or any number of thyroid conditions and what have you, those conditions, are, the body is constantly trying to heal from them all the time. Your body is a healing machine. It's a healing magician if you give it all the right tools. And so I believe that no matter what disease you are fighting, no matter what ailment you're fighting, you're, you will be supporting your body in that journey by having a great relationship with food. So then also what I want to say is that very often medications amplify the imbalance that's wrong in the first place. So if you were having some metabolic problems to begin with, now you take this medication and it's amplifying the metabolic problem, putting your body under stress and causing weight gain. Having a great relationship with food and a good metabolic mode, a good understanding of the metabolic modes is, in my opinion, more than likely to stop the weight loss and maybe even reverse it. Now, I'm going to tell you an extreme anecdotal case of this. One of my clients did very well on the program and she decided to enroll her children. Her son, I think the eldest son, um, had a disease. And for the life of me, now that I want to tell you the story, the name of the disease has slipped my mind. But I'll bet you somebody can put it in the comments when I describe the disease. It's a disease that happens to young children wherein they have uncontrollable um, uh, appetite, uncontrollable, unsatisfiable sense of appetite. They end up, they can't stop eating. And these children generally don't live very long. And they certainly don't live with their parents for very long because by the time they get to the age of you know, 12, their parents can no longer, um, uh, their, 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 their parents can no longer fight them away from the fridge. This mother was told that her child would not live very long and would, um, uh, would be, and would only ever gain weight for the rest of its life and, um, and would have to go into special care when he got old enough to fight because he'll fight his way to the fridge and fight and they won't be able to stop him. And she contacted me some months later and told me that her son had lost 20 pounds, that the doctors were completely blown away. And then she told me how. She said that he learned something in WildFit about what we call the food angel and the food devil. The food devil is the one going, hey, do you want that? By the way, you've got it, Caroline. Uh, Caroline. Yeah, that's the one. Alex as well. They, 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 we, we, we taught this, we, we, we teach about the food angel and the food devil. And these are the two voices. How many of you have ever had a conversation with yourself about food that kind of goes like this? Oh, look, there's donuts over there. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not, we're not going to eat the donut. I mean, we're on a diet, right? We're not doing that. Yeah. But they're free. I don't care if they're free. They're probably stale. They smell fresh to me. Has anybody ever had a conversation a little bit like that? You know, where there's like one voice trying to talk you into it. The other voice trying to talk you out. Well, in WildFit, we're going to teach you how to recognize those voices and neutralize them so they get on the same side. And what this child did is he drew a picture on the fridge of the sugar monster and the food devil and the food angel. And when he had his cravings, he would walk up to the fridge and he would talk to those characters. And then he walked away from the fridge. And for the first time in his life, he was losing weight. So I can't promise that that's going to happen for you in your medical situation. But I can tell you, I would bet on it for sure. And I will bet on it. I'll put my money where my mouth is. If you don't get the results you want, uh, we'll just give you your money back. Um, I, I've gone way, way over time. I want to thank every one of you guys for staying on and, and just being here with me. I hope that if you were sitting on the fence, and by the way, sitting on the fence is just uncomfortable. Get off the fence. Get on one side or the other. But here's what I want you to know. Wild Fit works. Search the hashtag WildFitWorks. Find all the case studies. Go and look at the WildFit Instagram. Look at the stories at Mind Valley Stories. It works, and it's going to work for you. And, and we guarantee it. So there's no risk for you. And if it's a bit of a stretch financially, I want you to think what a financial stretch it is to try to buy your health back once you've lost it. This is an investment that you will be absolutely grateful for. And the more expensive you feel it is right now, um, I, the more grateful you're going to be that you did it. And I'm going to tell you this right now, you're going to bump into me in an airport one day or at a mall or at a Mind Valley event. And you're going to walk up to me and say, I thought it was expensive. It turns out it wasn't, that it was one of the greatest investments I ever made. So 
Good luck. Stay wild, everybody. And I hope very much to see you on the very first session of the Wild Fit Challenge, kicking off 2024 and kicking off for you a whole new relationship with food, a whole new relationship with yourself, and a whole new understanding of your metabolism so that you can create the greatest, greatest quality of life at all. Somebody from Mind Valley, if you guys could please share the link one more time so people can register. And I want to remind you that what Vision did for you guys is exceptional. You get to you get to attend the live coaching calls with me. I'm on at least four of those calls. And by the way, I generally do more four, but we just promise those four. And my 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 coaches and master coaches that will be supporting you through the journey, you're going to get the results. I will see you on January 29th. Go and get yourself registered right now. Thank you guys all for sticking around. It's been a pleasure to share the time with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining.